good be your boys with the stupid it's your boy S O R E. What up, it's DJ E F N. It's military motherfucking happy hour. Make some noise! I almost said military crazy world radio. I almost messed up. You, you actually did, I say, did that. say that. Yeah. Right? Well, let me just tell you something. When we started this show, we wanted to big up people who are legends in this game and people who are groundbreakers. When we talk about this man right now, this man has broke the mold when it comes to being an entrepreneur rather than just lowering it to just drug dealing. He has took himself from nothing. I, I believe he started his operation from $300 and the man made close to a billion dollars in the 80s. God damn it, God damn it. The man has stood his time. He's still here doing what he got to do, standing proud, you know, have his children, uh, 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 stood his test of times and was a part of the CIA Contra controversy and he's still alive, still uh, here to prove it. I was watching the documentary knowing, documentaries, knowing I'm going to see him today and still scared of this shit. Like, oh, I think they're going to kill him. <laughs> like, like, you know, I know from back then, from back then, like, you know, the shit that he's been through, like, if you don't know who we talking to, we talking about, we talking about the legendary, the motherfucking monumental, Freeway Rick Mullen. Now, one of the, one of the, one of the queriest things that, um, well, not, Mr. Lee, can you pop the champagne? Yeah. yeah. Uh, please don't make it sound like a gunshot. There's a lot of gangsters in here. We don't like it. We don't like that. Um, we on edge right now. So one, one of the crazy things was you wasn't born in South Central. Nah. You were actually born in Texas, but it was, what, was five years old? I, we moved about four. Four okay. years, maybe right, of, right, of, right before five. Okay. Because you know why I, it was funny? Because your demeanor would, sometimes when I see you and I look at you, you remind me of uh, uh, little Jay. And that's why I thought maybe like, you know, like the distance to me. Yeah, that's that, you know my man. Saying? That's my man. Oh, okay. You okay. know, we, we come from the same era. Mm -hmm. You know, he's from Houston. I'm from Tyler. Right, right, right. Know. Right. So, so, goddamn, I don't know where to start. I told you. Goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, first off, I don't know if you know, but the Drink Champs, this is a place where we big up our legends. We want to give them their flowers now. So many people, when people pass away, they want to say how great they were. And, you know, the, the obituary and the people the people get up there and say how holier than thou and how much it's this guy would change. It's too late at this point. We want to give people their flowers now. You yeah, understand what I'm saying? I appreciate it. I appreciate it. One of the it. craziest things in the world, I know we've got a Dominican here. But I had always thought a Dominican invented crack. That's, that's the folk, like in Washington Heights, right? That's the folk world, right? It's a New York story. It's the New York side of the story. Is they, gave, they, got, they got the wild cowboys, right? The wild cowboys. Right. No, no, no. But you know what? After your story comes out, then the story is fixed. But I always had grew up thinking that a Dominican kid from Washington Heights was playing with cocaine and just invented crack. I, I, can you tell me my childhood was fucked up? Because <laughs> I was wrong. You can tell me. Right to my face. You can tell me. You can't give him a glass? Let's take it from there. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I, I didn't invent crack. Right. Okay. What I'm uh, uh, um, credit for is being the first crack millionaire. Mm. Now, when I started, there was guys in the street that was already cooking it up. Very few, though. Right. Uh, um, I got it from them. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And, and what was I it did, base first? Because base was like when they it was put free basing. That's it a movie for you, right? Oh. No, free basing was, it was a real complicated, this whole table would be right. full of chemicals. When I first started, oh, wow. it was real complicated. Wow. Uh, ether, that's what Richard Pryor got burned up. Oh, oh yeah, that's Remember right. Remember Richard that's Pryor right. got burned yeah. up? He was ether so, basing. It was so, flammable. It was flammable, yeah. a lot yeah. of hazardous equipment, and then... Uh, one day, one of the homies came and he said, man, mm -hmm. it's better when you use baking soda. Mm -hmm. And um, this just sounds healthier for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and that's, really how, uh, that's really how, that's really how we uh, <laughs> got the recipe. Right. Now, who invented it? I don't mm -hmm. really know. You know the story, Ben. Mm -hmm. So now, when I'm watching, uh, what was it? Cracks in the System? That's my documentary. Yeah, when I'm watching it, I forget who said it. I don't forget if it was the CIA or uh, CIA guy, or was um, the, the 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 newspaper guy, and he said that when he when he further looked at it, it really wasn't like it was racism. It wasn't really it wasn't like they was just trying to kill black. They was trying to um, get whoever by it was Michael Levine, okay, DA uh, agent okay. who worked over in Colombia, Peru, uh -huh. uh, um, and he was based out of New York, right? So uh, that's who that was, and he said that he's one of the first ones to see it. Uh, even before it got to the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, at that time it, it was, it was Bogota, it correct? Was, yeah, it was Pace. Okay, yeah. Uh, and he knew that once it got over here, that it was going to have a devastating effect. Right. 
but he didn't know where it was gonna have a devastating effect. Because what he's trying to say is like you're saying it, it was more political. Yeah, because I had racial. always, I had always, I had always heard right? like Iran Contra stuff. No, again, nobody I'm, really know about the racist thing right. that, that that happened. I mean, it's hard to say. You right. know, did the government deliberately put it in the community right. for blacks? Right. Uh, 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 they did obviously they not? knew that it was affecting certain neighborhoods at some point and let it keep going. Well, I had always heard. Um, me growing up, thank you. I had always heard me growing up that it was actually invented for the Black Panthers. For to, the, to, to, to eliminate to them? To destroy them. Like, like, you know, get a couple of people. And like, again, I'm getting the East Coast. I'm right, 41 right. years old, so I'm, I'm, I'm a lot, you know what I mean, younger than what is happening, but I'm old enough to almost understand. So that's what I used to hear. Well, but, well, well, one of the things, you know, the black leaders always said that uh -huh. the government was bringing drugs into the country. Right. Which you is know, facts. Uh, um, to a yeah. Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm X. Not all the bringing them. drugs. No, no. Oh, they okay. always said oh, that oh, okay. it was a government oh, okay. that was bringing them. They were being okay. called conspiracies. I thought you were about to say, nigga. What? No, no, no. Elijah no, no, was saying that. No, no. no. <laughs> no, no. no. Ultimately, they were right. right. Exactly. Right. I mean, right. what what wound up happening with 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 my situation is that it it brought all of this forefront to the future, mm -hmm. and they had actual evidence for the first time right. uh, where they could tie a government operative directly with a street dude. Right. Now, when you were doing it, did you know the level you were at? Because you were the first one, so so like you are black Pablo Escobar. So how, how like? Well, well, you know, you got you got to look at it like this here, Norm. I was 19 when I started. Damn. Uh, couldn't read, couldn't write, didn't watch the news. Wow. Uh, all I saw what the big homies was trying to do, and I saw where they was making their mistakes. Uh huh. Uh, I went in and corrected mm -hmm. their mistakes and made basically my own formula of, of getting down. Mm -hmm. I had no clue about the war in Nicaragua, right. where my man was. I mean, I wouldn't ask my man, where you live? Right. You know what I'm saying? That's just right. something you just don't do that in the game. You right. know, like, if he wants you to know where he lives, he gonna take you to his house. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. If he don't want you over his house around his wife and yeah, his right. kids, you don't go around his wife and kids. That's just how the game was. Right. So uh, I never really questioned how the whole thing was, was, was lined up. Now he had mentioned to me before, uh, oh, we fighting a war in my country. Right. And, and we got to win to get our property, our land back. Right. So I understood that because I was but, fighting for my land. But when you think, yeah. when you th he's saying that, you thinking, you're not thinking soldiers and military. You're thinking, no, like, you're thinking I'm, bloods and crips, right? Yeah, like, yeah right, that's how I would think. That's what I was thinking. Right, right. And he's yeah. Nicaragua, right? He's Nicaragua. So he's dealing with the Sandinistas and all that stuff. Like, Correct. He's in the Contras, dealing with he's the Contras. He's a Contra. Right, right. Fighting right. against the Sandinistas. Right, right. I don't know nothing about the Sandinistas. You know right. now, I'm assuming. Oh, absolutely. That's there. But absolutely. back then, you didn't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, right. yeah Nobody back. knew. It was all covert shit going on. It was, but it was people in the country that knew that there was a war going on in Nicaragua, that America was fighting this war, and uh, that uh, uh, the Contras had lost the war, basically, right. and they had to be pushed into the U.S. Right. Uh, they also knew that these guys still wanted to win this war and that these guys had started selling drugs. Mm -hmm. I mean, the CIA admitted that in their report mm -hmm. that um, eventually they became aware that these guys weren't just fighting a war over there with the money that they had got from the government, but they had took this money. Uh, my informant, who was also my drug supplier, when he testified- Blando, what's his name? Blando. Blando. But Blando. you didn't know any of that, that he was any of that government-wise? Oh, no, 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 no. I thought, the, I mean, you know, when, when you're growing up in South Central, we have a dislike for the police, right. you know, I, I mean, I done sit on the curb when I was 14, 15 years old. You know, get on the curb, sit down, don't move, put yep. your bike right there. Yep. You know, uh, 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 all y'all sit on the curb. Don't nobody move, we gonna run everybody. Mm -hmm. We gonna make sure these bikes ain't stolen. So we already had a dislike for the police, a distrust for the police. So uh, uh, it was no way that we would have been informed that this operation was going on. You know, this had to be something where you was politically uh, connected to really yeah. be in the loop on this. And like one of the first times the police chased you, they shot at you. Like a it few times. It, it wasn't like put your hands up. It was like, let's kill them. No, a few times. Well, you know, you know, um, God bless. I got so big mm -hmm. and I was able to outmaneuver the cops. Mm -hmm. You know, they couldn't figure out why they couldn't catch me with no drugs. You know, why would they would raid my houses and it would never be drugs in my mm -hmm. houses. So they got mad. 
You could, you could have lived with Instagram, boy. <laughs> Instagram oh, no. would have killed you back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> these cameras. Yeah, yeah, these yeah. cameras. Oh, my oh, goodness. Yeah, my, my, my bad. My bad. Just thinking. I'm just thinking. No, no. You're yeah. absolutely correct. Yeah, yeah. Because back then, we, we, we could hide more. You know, they nobody really didn't know how you look. Nobody knew how you look. Right. No, they don't know how you dress. You know, they looking for this guy driving around. You and, and you didn't have a police record back then? No, I didn't oh. have a record. Okay, continue. This is crazy. So... <laughs> They, they didn't know. All they knew was Freeway Rick. Right. You know, they don't know my full name. They don't know my address. They don't know who my girlfriend is. They don't know really nothing about me. Only thing that they know, the, the first time that, that, that I got tipped about them, about this, this task force, is uh, my gardener had, 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 had came in the house one day, and he was like, man, uh... Hold on, let's make some noise if you're having a gardener back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas is just niggas is just getting gardeners in the nineties right now. I mean, in the two thousands. The task force is not DEA. It's prior to DEA, right? Or They're prior to DEA. Right. They, mm -hmm. they just what, what what they did with the task force is, city hall had a meeting, uh -huh. and they say that people in the neighborhood kept bragging about this young guy, Freeway Rick, right. who's having all this money. Right. So what city council did is they had a meeting and they took five of the so toughest police stations in Los Angeles and put them together. And Ooh. they called them the Freeway Task Force. Ah. Oh, shit. These cops' job was to bring me down. Uh, along the way, they started stealing money, robbing people, uh, forging search warrants. I mean, they was some of the biggest crooks that you ever want to see. So uh, my gardener was the first one to tip me off to the Freeway Task Force. I didn't know nothing about them. So he tipped me off. and. Uh, that started a whole nother. Uh, but what did he say? He seen police coming around or something? No, he have, he brought me a newspaper article. Oh, what the fuck! It was in the newspaper. The city council had, had this meeting, and and so I didn't read the newspaper. Right. So I wouldn't have never caught it. But he right. brought it to my attention that it was in the newspaper, and they had one of my houses wow. inside the paper where uh, this informant that they had caught right. was talking about my house was protected by the police. He said that every time he came over to rob the house, that it's always police in the area wow. to protect the house. Now, I never saw that. Right. And you know. And you didn't know. They, they're scheming on you. They're they, watching. They're right. watching you, not protecting right. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. So uh, that was my first time becoming aware of them. They mm. had never raided none of my houses mm. at that time. Mm. I had no, no police contact. I mean, we was like just running free and wild. You know, we, mm. at this particular house, this is where our race car, we, we didn't even have dope at that house. Right. That was like our house where we kept our race cars. You know, we had top fuel cars and, right. and, and uh, pro stock race cars and, and bikes. And on the side, it was on the side of the freeway, like we always stayed. You know, that's where I got the name from. Right. Um, that was like our drag strip. So we just clowned and partied and, you know, had mad sound equipment and barbecuing every day. And right. people would just be coming in and Crips and Bloods and, you know, more like a meeting spot. No, right. no dope wouldn't be there. Like if they right. raided the house, you ain't going to find no dope. Right. Uh, but we found out that they were watching that house. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was the first time that we became aware of the freeway task force. Now, not only you were like, um, you were like the first person that, at least back then, because we thought the Bloods and Crips was really killing each other. Like we thought they couldn't be in the same vicinity. It was a, I, was, I remember that's the first time I heard that there was a guy that dealt with the Bloods and the Crips. Yeah, well, you know, what, what happened is, is what I found out and a lot of my guys find out that uh, when it came to money, guys would put their differences down. Mm. You know, it's, mm. it's very rarely that that, that happened, but mm. uh, it started to be where Crips were selling on Blood Streets and Bloods were selling on Crips Streets, where, where they were more corporation than, 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 than the world knew about. Wow. Uh, and it was just about making money. You know, when you're making money, you're having fun. Right, Don't right. nobody want no killing and no shooting because it's right. going to bring the cops in. So um, that was the first time that... Uh, that I had seen since the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember when the Bloods and Crips used to play football against each other. It was like what? this <laughs> neighborhood against that neighborhood, and they would come. And uh, one day we were at the beach. We rode our bikes to the beach, and when we got back, Manhattan Beach. Uh, Pay the Ray. Okay, okay. Pay Ray is 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 the one right by the house. Okay, or the cool. closest to the house, about okay. five miles. Okay, from where we grew up. So when we got back, we see the tape all taped off, and the police is there. Well. One of the Crips had killed one of the main Bloods. Wow. And that started the first clash uh, 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 in our area, which the Crips started in our area. I, I thought um, Raymond Washington was over a, a, um, 
a jacket or something. That was something that happened prior to that. Uh, uh, at the Palladium or something? That may have been later on, okay. down the line. Oh, after, okay. Yeah, this was well, after. Uh, uh -huh. This was like when, when the Crips had first oh, wow. organized. Like the 70s? Wow. Yeah, this was 70, maybe like 78, 79 ish, wow. something like that there. Uh, but, but how'd you avoid um, like being able to deal with both? Well, when I was young, I wanted to be a Crip. Oh, get out of here. Yeah, yeah. I, okay. I mean, I was diehard on being a Crip. Uh, but my mom was one of them ones that you know you don't play with my mom, but right. she didn't she didn't whoop you. Right. She beat you. you right. <laughs> my mom would take the telephone right. card, right. extension, right. cause she didn't whoop the belts. Right, right, right. A belt or a switch. Right. No, 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 right. no, 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 no. Right. no you're gonna break that belt, mm -hmm. you're gonna break that switch. Mm -hmm. So my mom would get the extension card. Mm -hmm. And uh when you went to school the next day, you had whip marks on you hiding them. You don't want nobody to see them because you don't know how you got whooped. So moms wasn't having it. Right. Uh, so when I got 12, I started playing tennis. Yeah, I was about to say, uh, and that, did you actually meet Arthur Ashe? I did, I did. Arthur Ashe uh, came down to our school, uh, right. our high school. I was, I was good enough to go to one of the best black tennis teams, right. uh, high school tennis teams in, in, in L.A. Wow. And uh, Arthur Ashe came out and gave everybody on the team awards and, and played with like four of the top guys. Right. Uh, but yeah, I did get to meet Ashe one time. Uh, I would think neighborhood kids would try to take your rackets from you or something. Like, nah, like, nah. Like they didn't want, want no tennis rackets. Yeah, they didn't want no Venus and Serena. Right, 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 wasn't nobody right, right, right. with Arthur Ashe then, right, you know? Right. Now, you said you lived on F Figueroa, right? Now, Figueroa, that's LA. Oh, that's the Bay. Because that was a part you know, of... No, Figueroa is South Central LA. South Central, okay, all right, cool. I always thought... Figueroa is where, where the prostitutes were. Okay, all right. I always thought that... I, for some reason, I, reading Donald Goins' books... Or forget what author I read. Figueroa, I always thought was in the Bay Area when no, I was no, in jail. No, no, Figueroa so, is one of the main uh, uh, throughways in Los Angeles. It's like okay. maybe the second or third okay. biggest street okay. in in L.A. And then Figueroa runs side by side with the 110 freeway. Okay, they 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 separate each other. And my house set right in between Figueroa and the 110 oh, freeway. So that's where freeway. That's where freeway uh, came uh, uh, in. That now, now did you um. Uh, hold on, before I get to the rap shit, I was about to go to the rap. I was just stay on some drug shit, all right? There's <laughs> so much, there's so much, there's so much there. to talk about. So much to talk. You got something to eat? Cause I'm going in my notes. No, yeah. I mean it, it goes beyond drug shit. Right. Did you helped Denzel Washington no, early was, in his career. That was Harry O. Oh, Harry O. Oh, yeah, Harry Harris. did that. Yeah. Michael Harris did that. Uh, you did Anita Baker. But you were, I did Anita uh, Baker. Anita but you wasn't a part of none of that. You didn't help. I mean, me and Harry was we, we was we was cool. You know, we, right. we was partners, but uh, uh, I wasn't a part of him. With his with his play checkmate, oh, okay. we were we were kind of like almost like uh, uh, kind of like rivals, but not really rivals. You know right. what I'm saying? Because right. uh, um, he claimed uh, a set actually, right, Ariel? I think he was blood. I think he grew sure. up with the bloods, but then he you know he ran with the '60s too. Oh wow! Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, when 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 you become a certain status in in right. the game. You have to transcend past that gang banging. Mm, right. You know what hood yeah. you from, what set mm. you from. Uh, mm. uh, even like with me, I didn't gang bang, but my neighborhood is Hoover, wow. and everybody considers me. Even in jail, the Hoovers right. told everybody I was Hoover. Right. Even though I said no, nah, I ain't Hoover. They, they still <laughs> say no, nah, you Hoover. Right. So uh, <laughs> escape it. Right. You from the hood? That's what you. you it's know. still hard to transcend that. But I still dealt with the 60s, which was Hoover's number one enemy. Oh, that's my next question. How, how did that was, I think you, think you were saying that. But. Well, well, you know, you, you just have to be bigger than, than, than the situation. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times, you have to make up your own mind. Like me and Big U, you know, we, right. me and Big U like this. Big up Big U, we about to um, get, get him and his gang. Oh, y'all gonna bring Big, Big U yeah, in? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah, that's my man. Big U mm -hmm. doing some big things out there, too, you know. Yes. Uh, uh, but me and Big Hugh been partners. Uh, right. uh, Petey Wack, right. who, who's, I don't know how much time Wack doing right now. He okay. might be doing about 40 years. God bless. Uh, uh, but he's one of the founders of, of, of the 60s. And wow. we've always been cool. Right. So I was able to transcend the neighborhood politics. You know, I didn't allow the politics to dictate which direction I was going you, in. You know why you're a strong-minded person? Because me being from the East Coast, and not seeing the blood, and not seeing the crib. When I seen it on television, I automatically was gravitated towards that life. Like I automatically wanted to study it. I automatically wanted to be a part of it. So for you be involved and be able to say, you know what, I'm gonna be. That's probably like the most disciplined, plenarian type of shit I've ever heard. You know well, what I'm saying? Because and, 
and you know us as blacks, we right. don't have much that we can be a part of. Right. You know what I'm saying? So exactly. when, when I was coming up to see the the, the camaraderie uh, with the Crips and the Bloods, you know, I knew Big Putin too, the founder mm -hmm. of the Bloods. That was my man. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Big Putin. Uh, okay. uh, matter of fact, right before he died, I was trying to get Big Putin to write a book. Wow. Uh, I was still locked up. Yeah, I right. talked to you too, I believe, when right. I was locked up. I don't know yeah, if you I, remember. I believe, I, well, I, um, as soon as you got, you had just got out of prison. Um, um, Windy but, Day. But, uh, Windy Day, okay, okay. Windy I, day, I thought I was on the phone. I thought I talked to you through, um, uh, what's my homeboy from the jungles? Uh, T. Oh, Rogers. The, yeah, T. Rogers. I yeah. thought I spoke to you through him. Windy, I think Windy. Yeah, it was Windy, okay, okay. Yeah, I yeah, remember yeah, that. Yeah, okay. yeah, because she was telling me about when you was getting out. Yeah, yeah. You know, Windy, uh, uh, you, you know Windy Day? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Windy, 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 you know, she, yeah, I know she, she, she helps everybody in yeah. jail. Yeah. Yes, if yeah. you in jail, right. Windy Day, and you got a little mm. reputation, Windy Day will look out for you. Right, big up the Windy Day. We need her on here, too, right? Yes, absolutely. That's my girl. So let me let me hit you with this 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 word, because this messed me up. Continuous criminal spree. Yeah, that's the words that got me out. I, I still don't understand. <laughs> like, like when you said that, the difference. Like, you yeah, don't no. understand the difference between okay a, a career criminal okay and a continuous criminal spree. Mm. A career criminal is somebody who commits a crime, uh -huh. go to jail, and then does it again. Get out and then do it again. A continuous criminal spree uh -huh. is meaning that you committing crime over and 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 over, but you haven't been arrested. So it's a continuous criminal spree. Damn, I don't know the difference. One time, neither of them sounds good. Okay, so one means so so continuous spree means you're doing doing it without getting caught. Right. Yeah. So uninterrupted. Okay. That's a spree. So, so that's how you beat your case because they said that you had the three strike law. Right. Because they used that as. They said that my case was a three strike. I was a three striker. Right. Even though I'd only been in jail one time. Wow. So I figured out that what I was doing was a continuous criminal spree, even though it was in different states. Mm -hmm. See, they thought because I was selling dope in Texas and Cincinnati and Louisiana mm -hmm. and St. Louis mm -hmm. that all of those was different arrests. Right. But what I tried to had to get them to understand is that it was a continuous criminal spree that was uninterrupted. Mm. And in order to be a career criminal, you have to be cool. brought to your senses. Right. See, it, it, you're not a continuous uh, a, a career criminal if you're not brought to your senses. If nobody you ever sits you down, like that. <laughs> and thank <scams>. you. <laughs> Yourself, <laughs> yeah, this is a bat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is I mean, I, I got I got my public defender. You know, right. he's working with me, and, and, right. and he's writing everything up. But you, this is you reading yourself. You but, read but it. I still can't write that well. You know, I couldn't right. write the briefs and none right. of that. But I know what I want in my brief. Right. You right. know, I, I so read. You, so you read? Okay, 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 please. I read enough books to know what the right. brief's supposed to say. Right. And 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 uh, like I said, I was I was in them books all day. I, I started to. So study. when you came across those words. You understood those words immediately? Absolutely, absolutely. Because, like, I get what you're saying, but it's still complicated. Like, what you're saying right oh, now. Oh, no question. The judge yeah. didn't understand it. Wow. She didn't Ooh, understand damn, it. you understood <laughs> more than the judge. The huh? judge didn't understand it. My right. prosecutor, my lawyer didn't. Right. I paid that dude a lot of money. <laughs> right. the, dude who, the dude who did my appeal, right. the dude who did my appeal wasn't the, law, the, judge, the lawyer who went to trial with me. Wow. My trial lawyer said, hey, man, that little money you got left? Yeah. Put it on your books. All right, keep that. Cause you're gonna need it. All right. You got a lot of time to do. All right, All right. Life, and in fact. I had to go with another dude who hadn't even talked to me. You right. know what I'm saying before. Right. So I had to get him to understand what I was saying too because he didn't really understand it either. Mm -hmm. They was all more concerned about crossing state lines so you're saying if you would have got caught twice, then they could have proved that you was a, a criminal. I would have been a career criminal. If you would have convicted twice, you could have you got caught right. more than twice, but convicted. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's and I've been smooth. convicted twice. Well, well, okay. But it was the same criminal spree. <laughs> <laughs> no, I so I went to Texas. Yo, he got him. I went to Texas. I went to Texas and I said I'm guilty. Right. I went to Cincinnati, I'm guilty. Right. Saint uh, Louisiana, I'm guilty. Right. But it was still the same. I never got out of handcuffs. 
Right. See, they took me from one state to the next state to the next state. I was never out of handcuffs. I was always like this here, everywhere right. I went. It wasn't right. like I got out and I'm free right. and then I started slanging right. again and got right. caught. It was right. like, oh no, you've been in this state, this state, then we all been looking for you. So right. when they got me, everybody wanted a piece of me. Wow. Yeah. So let me let me ask you something. It's a little off subject, but it's on subject, right? How come every movie or every every like ending to something always says this is the last one? Like this is the last. And when I'm watching your documentary, you saying you're out. You came home. You built a community center. Was, you did. It's hard, man. You know what I'm saying? Like it's hard not to go back. You know, to yeah. the well. You know, whenever things get tough. Right. And. Uh, uh, you have a tendency to go back to your habits. You know, like right. the person who's right. trying to stop smoking cigarettes right. and his right. wife start acting up, he pick up a cigarette. Facts. You know what I'm Facts. saying? Something go wrong, he pick up a cigarette. Facts. So with me, my crutch had become selling cocaine. Cocaine mm. made everything better for me. Mm -hmm. No matter what was going on, right. I could go sell some cocaine right. and it get a little better. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, you know my old lady acting up, I go make some money right. and get 10000 right. right. Now she feel good. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, so, so we have a tendency to go back to to, to our crutches, and, right. and cocaine had become for me a crutch because right. one of my, I, I, we were so poor. Right. Right. Let me tell you, I was in, the first time when I got to jail. I ran across a dude I went to junior high school with, right? Uh -huh. And uh, when we run into each other, we're like, "Man, you Joseph Petrie," and he's uh -huh. like, "Yeah, Rick, man." Uh -huh. He's like, "Man, I heard about you, uh -huh. but I didn't believe it." Right. I was like, what you mean? He said, man, I couldn't believe you made that kind of money. Right. I said, why not? He said, man, you was the poorest dude in the neighborhood. Mm. He said, I remember when you used to tape tennis shoes, tennis balls to your tennis shoes to keep your feet from being on the ground. And you and your brothers used to change pants. What? So y'all didn't wear the same pants every day. We all knew y'all was wearing each other's pants. <laughs> so so to, to, to come from there, uh -huh to wind up where I wound up, mm. money had become my escape. Mm. You know, that was like everything that I wanted. I right. didn't want nothing else. Right. I wanted to, to, to fix my mama floors. Right. I wanted to put windows in her house. I wanted right. a new carpet in her house. I wanted to have a new kitchen right. uh, to do the things that I felt would make her life the way I thought it should be. You know, this is my mama. Right. This is how she should be living. And um, right. that was my goal. And then nothing else really mattered. Right. And um, let's make some noise for that, goddamn. Hold on. <laughs> so that's real shit. That's real shit. Like, you know, uh, no, no, no. I'm going to do a little bit more and then I'm going to come back to that. God, I got so much shit going on in my head. Take but, your time. Take yeah, your yeah, time. yeah, yeah. I got so much shit going on. <laughs> you know, this is a, a very interesting guy. Like, and, and, and the thing about it it's is... It's getting more interesting, and, though. And the thing about it is this. A lot of people would have been in your position and came home and, and did it again. Well, you know, I mean, I did it that second time. You know, I did the food that second time. W were you as famous that second time? Or, like, you know what I'm saying? Or, or... In the streets I was. Okay. Like yeah. the dope boys knew me. Yeah. It, it's 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 almost like right now, you know, right. like like uh Now you TMZ famous. Don't fuck around, nigga. Don't fuck around, nigga. They still, know you. It's still <laughs> it's still when when I what I know about my my famousness, because I right. study. Right. I study everything that I do. I I'm, right. I study. Right. Um the people who like me use the dope boys first. Mm -hmm. Of course. Next hustlers, yeah, hero, yeah. and athletes. Yeah. So it's really a male base of guys who are trying to get money or who like money. Right. Either one. Both of those are really the same. You can't right. separate the two. Right. That's my fan base. Right. Yeah. Those are the people who, right. who 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 bought my book. You right. know, like it was guys in the street bought my books. I mean, I can't even read, Rick, but right. fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Bible and shit. That's respect. You know, respect. Uh, I learned yeah. so much from you from the videos and when you went to trial, mm -hmm. and I use that shit right now. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, I understand right. who support me, right? And who 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 like me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I also know that those are motherfuckers who run the streets. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. why. I can feel comfortable by going to any city in right. this country and don't have no problems because right. the dudes who run them streets right. fuck with me. Right. Well, you was, you was the, the, literally the first cocaine kingpin 
in America. Crack King Crew. Crack King Crew. Okay, King King King. Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> Well, I mean, because, you know, we got we got young Escobar in here. We're going to bring him in. A, in a, um, but have you ever, have you ever like, ran into, uh, other than the, the Nicaraguans, have you ever met, like, uh, Colombians or, like, anybody other than that level? Because I imagine your name had to be ringing bells with all the cartels. I mean, you know, I used to come down here. Right, wow. Okay. You know, with the Nicaraguans. This is where they used to have their meetings at with, uh, wow. uh, this is where the Colombians and the Nicaraguans used to meet, right here in Miami. Wow. I was coming to Miami, like, 81, 82. Right. You know, right. uh, uh, they would make me come in and come to the meetings and, and sit down and right. tell them what we could do, you know, how many keys we could move. Uh, I remember the first time I came down here, man. And it's in the book, too. It, and, uh, man, they had me. I brought all my money down here. I brought like 600000 650000 That was every you dime I had. On the plane? Yeah, we flew in on the plane. Man, damn it, let's make some noise. Keep going, keep going, Rick. Keep going, Rick. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. My boys, we, we flew in on the planes. We went to, uh, I think we went to... Uh, Don't tell me I went to Tootsie's with that 600. No, we went to Jackson. We went to Jackson. Tootsie's Jackson. Jackson. Cause we didn't want to come into Miami. You know, we, oh, Miami Oh, oh Jackson, Jacksonville. Yeah, we went okay. to Jackson. Okay. And we, we took a rental car. And y'all drove down with it? We drove down. So we do the deal. Buy the dope. And when we finished doing the deal, we had $1,500, no right. car, right. no plane tickets, right. and no money at home. Right. So we sit in a hotel room with 20 bricks, and we're like, how are we going to get this shit home? Right. Right. Yeah, wait. <laughs> he said 600000 worth it. Hey, and no driver's license. <laughs> right. We ain't had a driver's license. Right. So we buy, we buy a... a we bought a Suburban. Uh -huh. We bought an old Suburban. I think we paid like $1,200 for it, man. Right. And uh, we rolling back. We yeah, stop in Georgia. We rest in Georgia. Wait, you're right. driving this cross country? Yeah, we drove all the way back to LA. Wow. Yo, wow. wow. Hey, listen, I blow the motherfucking car up in Chattanooga, Tennessee. <laughs> oh, I'm caught in a diesel truck. It's raining like a motherfucker, right? But we finna be rich. We get this shit back to LA. We finna be rich. Right. So uh, we rolling. It's about 11 o'clock at night. My boy's asleep. I hear them. I said, man, the truck ticking. Right. They said, what? We told you don't drive this motherfucker too fast. I'm trying to get home. Right. So uh, the mug just like, and this blew up, right? Right on the side of the highway. So we With 20 over. bricks in there? Yeah, we okay. pull over. We grab the bricks out the back, the suitcase, uh -huh. throw them in some bushes, uh -huh. call the tow truck to come get us. Tow truck come get us. Now we in Tennessee. We got like $350. Right. No driver license. All right. No more money. All right. And nobody to call. So, uh, but 20 bricks, 20 bricks. Let's so, let's be clear truck, the tow truck uh -huh. take us with the 20 bricks, with the 20 Let's bricks because we throw the bricks back in the car once the tow truck hook up. <laughs> <laughs> we finna roll. So, uh, <laughs> so he take us to a junkyard. Oh, white dude, man, I'll never forget this dude, dude, coolest motherfucker in the world, man. I love that dude. Right. I wouldn't have made it without him, man. That, right. that favor he did for us right. uh, helped us out a lot. So we did. He's like, man, there's something funny about you dudes, man. Ain't none of y'all got driver license. Y'all can't get a rental car. What's going on with y'all? So we got the bricks in the back of the car that broke down. So uh, he said, you know what? You see that old truck over there? It, it was a little, small Ford U-Haul truck. The little, little, bitty one. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, y'all give me $300 and uh, y'all can take it. Have. Man, we took that. We got to uh, Vegas. We drove it all the way across country. My boys was big too, man. Al is about six two, so his legs is all over, and we sticking. It was stick shifts. We hitting each other, but uh, we got to Vegas, man. And the boys came and picked us up, and we was like, man, we on. So we, we took that, and that was our first time hitting a million dollars after we dumped that. Wow. Now let me ask you something. Was the cocaine cheaper in Miami? Or At that time, it was. That's the reason why? Mm -hmm. Because cause that's what we always heard. Like, uh, it, it, it always comes cheap. It cheaper. wasn't cheap, though. Back then, it was like 45000 a kilo. Oh, Jesus. But in L.A., it was like 200000 Yeah, it was cheaper for that time period. All right, just because I'm from New York, so I need to know how much it was in New York. <laughs> Man, we wasn't even going to New York. You weren't even fucking with us. We weren't Jesus. even going to New York then. Jesus, we, we didn't start going to New York till like 85, We was broke back then, Jesus, fuck. <laughs> so everybody from Miami is balling. Yeah, and Miami LA. was Miami was a place, you know, that wow. was, it was a where, port of entry. It was a port of entry yeah, at that yeah. time. You know, the, wow. the Columbians was coming here. That was before the Columbians start coming to LA. Mm. You know, once they find out that LA was a bigger market, I guess, right. then they start pouring in LA and, uh, that's when the price, you know, the price war started. Because right. like I said, when we first 
first kilo we bought, we paid like 45, 47 for it. But right. ounces, you know, we used to pay 33. 47,000. 47,000 okay. for a kilo. But yeah. ounces, we used to pay, the first ounce I bought, I paid 32. 3200 3200 for an ounce of cocaine. Jesus. And so I had to break it down. That was and better make, than gold. And make like 9000 uh. off of one ounce. Uh. What's my man you said you gave him? Um, he, he, he read up with you eight, 1800 You gave him two ounces and he sold it out. And that, that, What's his name? Uh, he's a coach now. Uh, you talking about Coach Ward? Yeah. Or, or you talking about Hancho? Uh, no, Probably, no, no. I think you're talking about Hancho. No, well, he said he sold it out the same day. Oh, you're talking yeah. about Coach Ward. Yeah. Coach Ward. Coach yeah. Ward. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Coach was a, um, he was a little football player, you know, right. and, and those are the kind of guys I used to look for. You know, I should look for, for dudes right. that was disciplined. Uh, hit me up with Yeah, again. I got you. Hit me I'm up coming for you right now, baby. <laughs> look at that. Perfect you know, it's my form. birthday. We're going to celebrate it's your birthday. birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Birthday. We really, we really it's all good. I don't really celebrate that shit yeah. no way though. But okay, you must have fucking I'm here yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah, come gonna, on, man. We're we gonna we celebrate. We celebrate. Today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coach uh, Ward, he was a young dude, you know, and, and uh, those are the dudes I used to look for, man. Like, right. Good dudes, mm -hmm. you know, ain't getting high. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 trustworthy, you know, like you can give them something. Was that a rule in your crew? Don't get high? Because yeah, I, yeah, I noticed yeah. that about tried, the other two brothers. I tried to implement that, right. but you know, dudes don't listen. Right. You know, they, they'd rather be high than have money. Yeah, yeah. Some that's, more my, that's my next book. So everybody <laughs> be high than have money? <laughs> <laughs> did you ever fuck around? Did you ever try? I tried it for about a week, maybe two oh, weeks, man. A week? I, now, what did you try? You tried Coke? Coke. Or you, oh, okay. I went hard. Because Coke, listen, <laughs> in, all, in, all, in all realness, back then, Cocaine was looked at like the rich man's job. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I wasn't getting, I wasn't using it because, well, I was too. But let me say this here: right. how the reason I didn't use because when I first got involved, the big homies all told me like, if you don't get high, you gonna get rich, little motherfucker. Right. Because I was like considered young. I was right. 19, but I was like young for the dudes who was involved mm. with, with 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 coke at that time. Uh, I mean, a gram was three hundred dollars. So the only motherfuckers could afford it was like right. pimps, lawyers, doctors. So motherfuckers like me and under me, they really didn't have no money. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. You know, I had money because yeah. I had enough sense to hang out right. with the pimps. Mm -hmm. And and uh, that's how I really became exposed to the game from hanging out with them. Right. Uh, but at that time, man, it was it was so damn expensive that uh, then nobody then nobody had no money to get that. Could, could, could you think? Could you think the era? And again, we're not glorifying it, but we're understanding that this is factual facts. It's, it's history. history. It's history. It's history. Yeah, it's history. You, think, you think a person could do it on your level the way you did it back then? Like, it, like you know, you ever, hard, you ever read Don Diva or the Feds magazine? It's hard. And it was like, man, this, this kid might have did it more bigger than me. Like, it's hard. You know, it's really hard to, uh, to, to duplicate that system. But right. you know, these kids are smarter now. You know mm. what I'm saying? They, they, mm. they learning how to... Maneuver. Now, I couldn't have maneuvered in this system. You know, right. motherfuckers taking pictures of me. I'd have been like, hold up, man. Yeah. What, <laughs> who are you working for? <laughs> right, 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 right. You know, right. it's a total different right. era, you know. Mm -hmm. Like now, uh, you know, like my nephews come and show me that dudes are selling dope on the internet and right. all that, you know. Dumb niggas crazy. <laughs> Dumb niggas crazy. Whoever I think niggas no is. era that's going to be right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but they doing it right now. Right. So, you know, uh, mm. I don't know how they doing it, yeah. uh, 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 yeah. how they is working. Right. You know, with us, you right. know, we hid in, in the shadows, right. you know, when right. we got down. But it, it, it's a different era. But, right. uh for some reason, these kids are gonna figure out how to make it work. You know what I'm right. saying? And and I'm sure that there's somebody out there mm -hmm. that's that's put. I mean, you know, like Big Meech did. You know, right. Big Meech came up with a, a formula that mm -hmm. worked during that time. Right. And I'm sure that there's somebody else right now who's figure out how to uh, uh, how to beat the system. Now it's, it's funny you bring up Big Meech because one of Big Meech's biggest downfalls, uh, that people would say, is his, his flashiness. Yeah. It was like you know I remember going to a club. Kid you not. It was 14 of them and they had 14 Lamborghinis outside. I was like, damn, no one could ride with someone else? <laughs> like, 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 I was dying. You know, I didn't like, meet Meech until after he failed. <laughs> well, oh, okay. Yeah, after he failed, you know, Wendy hooked us up and okay. she wanted me to uh, uh, work with him with his case and right. talk to him and, and uh, me and him was writing through Wendy. So right. uh, um, I was corresponding with him and, and he told me what they would offered when they offered him the deal. And, right. uh, I gave him my personal opinion on, mm -hmm. on the deal. You know, I didn't think that... Uh, I didn't think they had any issues on winning this case. 
Right. Uh, and and I thought that he should take the deal. Right. Even though it was 30 years, you know, right. uh, I know dudes that wish they would have took the 30 right now. They done right. did 30 right. and still going right. because right. they didn't take the deal. So I thought that uh, it was in his best interest to uh, to take the 30-year deal. But in, in, the, in, in, in the life that um, you guys live, is being flashy bad? Like how, like, you know, before John Gotti, we really, we knew of the mafia, but we didn't know of the mafia. Like, you know, and I'm coming from Queens, where he's from. So when John Gotti started flashing and he started actually claiming that character, do you think that was bad for business? Like Absolutely, uh, okay. absolutely. Uh, my guys, man, <laughs> one of them just got out too, man, little Tommy. Uh, uh, little Tommy was like 18 years old. He had two Rolls Royces. Right. Uh, uh, Tremaine Jackson had bought a Ferrari and didn't have all the money to get it out. Jermaine well, Jackson? Yeah, Jermaine Jackson. Okay. He had a, a Testarossa. He had the first Testarossa probably in the country. Wow. And the Testarossa was sitting in there on the showroom floor, and little Tommy passed by and saw it. <laughs> and he walked in, and he told the man, uh, how much for that Testarossa? Uh. So the man told him the price, and they said Tommy gave him 10000 extra. Wow. You know, <laughs> to tell Jermaine to wait till the next one. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. So, and then he wrecked that one. Right. And everybody was laughing at him. He went back and bought another one. Right. So uh, uh, when when they did this, it, it it tipped the police off to what we was doing mm -hmm. because uh, uh, for a while um, the police didn't know what we was doing. Like yeah. when when you know I got those sheriffs indicted. The cops yeah. that was doing all of the the stealing and, and okay. The I sheriff got them indicted. The guy that you met in the documentary. Yeah, I got them yeah. indicted. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I had to I had to take care of them because they, <laughs> right. they was hurting the hood. <laughs> right, right, right. They were so, stealing from y'all. They were stealing and robbing. They weren't even being robbing the hood. They was being robbing and robbing. And then we'll send you to jail. They would rob you <laughs> and send you to jail. And send you to jail. Wow. I'm like I I I can go with being robbed, but right. you ain't gonna rob me and put right. me in jail. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? So uh, uh, I hired a private investigator. Wow. To investigate them. Wow. I spent a hundred thousand. My lawyer, I go see my lawyer. So they had just raided my girl house, right? Uh-huh. They never had no dope in my girl house. Right. How the fuck? I know we ain't forgot no dope in there. You know, cause right. you know how you sometimes yeah, you, you know, we we, we we used to keep our dope in cars. Right. You know, that was how we beat the cops. Right. They they didn't understand the car game. Uh -huh. You know, you throw it in the trunk of the car, move the car uh, a block or two down the street, never see it until you need it. Right. Uh, they never gonna know. So, we always kept our dope in cars. So sometimes we would forget and have 10, 15 keys in the trunk of a car. We go to the car and open the trunk and it's 15 keys in there. Like, damn, how long this shit been in here? So, I'm saying when they raid our house, I said, damn, did we leave that shit in there on accident or something? You know, maybe one day we, we left it under the sink. Or maybe or, you left cash there. Well, cash, if they'd have said cash, I would have said, yeah, okay. you know. Right. Yeah, you know. But they said dope. But they said dope. Right. You know, you know you this is my you know girl that. house, right. you know what yeah. I'm saying? So I'm like, nah, I ain't buying that. So I go tell my lawyer, right? I'm like, man, I know it wasn't no dope in that. He said, oh, no, you got to have, you had to have at least some dope. I said, man, I ain't left no dope in her house. Mm. So he said, oh, so you saying they crooked? He arguing with me. I'm telling yeah. this motherfucker, right? Right, right? He arguing with me. I say, I said, man, wasn't no dope in there. So he said, well, if you think they, they, they crooked, get a private investigator. Because I had never thought about it. I ain't know right. nothing about no private investigator. Right. You know what I'm saying? I ain't right. never been to court yet. Right. Right. So uh, I said, well, man, who is a private investigator? So he put me up. I hired a private investigator. I gave dude 100 grand. And so dude followed the cops around. Everywhere they went, he went. Up front or they had to give him 50 I gave him 100 50. up front. Yeah. Oh, OK, cool. God damn it. This is, this is them times. <laughs> this is them times. Continue. <laughs> yeah, so uh, he followed them around. And uh, uh, he started bringing me back the evidence, you know, right. not only from my crew, but they was also doing the same thing to other crews. Mm. Uh, eventually, they had 150 people that was in prison, and when uh, when they finally arrested me and indicted me, I hand the investigation over to the prosecutor. Like, mm. I don't know what y'all are trying to do, but right. these dudes here, right. they ain't gonna be your witness. Right. We got too much dirt on them, so uh, they let 150 people out of prison. Wow. So wow. that like sent my, my notoriety and Big Putin, the founder of the Bloods, was one right. of the guys who, who who eventually got out. And I didn't even know, you know, Putin was one of my guys too. He was right. he was getting his stuff from me. Uh, uh, 
But I didn't know that the cops had set him up wow. until we all sitting in there together and he was uh. like, yeah, man, them motherfuckers follow me from your house. Wow. <laughs> now, this is not the time where you, the, the officers start talking about the judge because they had the judge on the, it's not the same case. Yeah, that's the same, the same case. case. Oh, wow. That's the same case. Yeah, how, how you knew to be smart like that? I, I, I didn't. The lawyer put me up on it. <laughs> I, was just, I was just keen to what he was saying. Right. You know, when he tell me, well, hi, uh, uh, he right. tell me that uh, he don't believe they doing it. Right. This motherfucker, he's so smart. He don't believe they're doing it, right? <laughs> he think I'm lying. No, but back then it did probably sound crazy. It did like, because like, we went, we yeah. hadn't had no no, you, you, no you had no was, evidence. Yeah, yeah you no had, cops yeah. <laughs> So I, I can mean, see where you come this, from. This is probably <laughs> one of the craziest cases ever yeah. in in the history of of, of police force. Right. Right. You know, and you know, Rampart was an offshoot um, of the Freeway Task Force. No. Remember the Rampart case where the dudes was. <sighs> Stealing the money and, and doing all the stuff that, that came out in, in, in a... That's not training day like based off of that? Training day is based yeah. off of that. Right. Wow. But it was deeper than training day. Right, right, Training right. day didn't even touch the surface. Wow. You, you see these scars in my face? Right. All this flashlight therapy. Wow. While I was handcuffed. Handcuffed, my legs hog tied. Right. The dog, dog bite, bite me. You, yeah. wow. The dog bite me and they hit me in the head with flashlights. Steel flashlights. They got these wow. big, long ass steel flashlights. They cracking you in the head. I mean, you go out and then they wake you up. I'm gonna be honest. To this day, LAPD is still the scariest niggas ever. Oh, no I'm not gonna question. lie. I'm legal forever, and, the, and, I, and I still see the LAPD. I be looking like that. I be looking like I don't know why. I look the other way, nigga. And, I don't know. I'm scared of death of them niggas. Most racist. Yeah. yeah. Right, and they got black and white cars. It's, they it's they just they just raided the sheriffs. Sheriff is the green cars though, right? No, sheriffs black and white. Too. Black and white. They both okay. were black and white. One just got sheriff wrote on it. Okay. The sheriff run the county jails. Okay. Wow. You know they run the jails. Okay. They just got them for having uh, this coat, this white coat. Cult. C-U-L-T. Yeah, you know, uh, you know uh, I speak Ebonics. Uh, yeah, no, no. <laughs> I thought you said they got coke. I said, damn, these niggas got their own coke, too? They got police coke? I guess. <laughs> so they was in jail having dudes fighting with each other. Wow. Uh, just doing all kind of insane wow. shit. And the feds just arrested. You know, they arrested the head sheriff. Wow. He, he's, he's in jail right now. No, I didn't for, know that. Yeah, for the wow. same stuff. That he was allowing this this activity to be going on inside of our jails. And, wow. and um, all of that's just continuation of what had started wow. uh, back in the 80s. Now, in L.A., it's so, like, racial. Like, that's the most racial um, when it comes to uh, streets. When it comes to streets, it's like real race. Like in business, you, there's Mexicans in the same meeting, there's blacks in the same meeting, but when it comes to streets of LA, it's it's really segregated. It's bloods, Absolutely. it's Crips, then there's Mexicans, and then there's Asians. You at the level you was at, did you have to deal with each and every gang? We already know, we already established your respect well, earlier. I, I, didn't really deal, I, didn't, I didn't really deal with, with Mexicans until okay. I went to prison. Okay. Uh, when I was on the street, um, the, the, the black community was so strong then that I didn't really need to come outside of that mm. that community. Mm. So I was able to 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 other than getting the drugs, right. I could stay inside of my little comfort zone and, mm. and, and make like I wouldn't if you walk up to me and you was white, I'd be like, what you talking about? You know, right. you, you wasn't even uh, interested in white customers. He's no. making a billion dollars not not no, the white No, guy. I didn't need that. Wow. Because I had the the the, the cream of the black market. Wow. So, please don't, don't forget your thought. But uh, my neighborhood, that was our goal, was to have like Barney come from Rego Park to come to our Barney. neighborhood. Like, yeah, this real nigga named Barney. <laughs> and we used to have this, uh, this white lady named Trans Am. She, she used to come through in a Trans Am. But she used to come through and buy like a 500 pack. Like, you know, for, to us, that was huge. But your goal was fuck that. I had the whole community. Right. Well, well, well. My guys depended on those, right, you right. know, or their guys right. who was on the street selling the fifties. And but right. I had got to a position where I wasn't selling less than like twenty, thirties, forties, fifties, hundreds. You wow. know, uh, so I didn't really need, um, you know, Barney coming through with mm -hmm. five hundred, mm -hmm. five hundred. What am I gonna do with five hundred dollars? Right, 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 right. right. Uh, give it to her. Right, right exactly. <laughs> exactly. I don't even know her. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, I had a, I had a guy that rode around with me every day right. to give out money. Wow. That was his job. Wow. When people walk up to me at the gas station, oh my, uh, my right. this, and 
give it, give it five hundred, give him right. three hundred, right. you know. And, and he was taking them out the one dollar bag, you hey, know. Dude, you like Escobar, Manny Pacquiao put together. <laughs> <laughs> Where is that? Do Manny right Pacquiao do, man? Man, you ain't seen the fight the other day, back Manny Pacquiao before he go jogging, he just hand out money. For real, well, that's, I mean, you got. He was on some Manny Pacquiao shit back then. Let's meet them niggas. We went with them. <laughs> That nigga was Robin Hood for real. He was selling coke and giving it back. Well, you know, a lot right. of people they look at that as 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 paying taxes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But I looked at it as taking care of the hood. You, you, know? you know, I was in Jamaica one time and, and um, I, I flew out there with this dude named Dudas, right? And Dudas had had the whole community. Like I, I didn't ask what he did. He had had the whole community, and uh, we had to to film a video there. We had to pay him. And he wanted to meet me. I met him in a cave. And two, two, three in years later, cave? in a cave. It's a fact. <laughs> it's I, I skipped over that part. Yeah, yeah, I skipped over that. Well, two, three years later, I'm sitting there watching um, the news. You know, you make it. You better know do, who do this is. I'm watching the news, and I had, I know, I did. I had met the biggest drug dealer in fucking Jamaica history. And I'm sitting there, and the whole neighborhood would not give this nigga up for like three, four days. I'm talking about they was backing down the police. Whatever, how, whatever this happened. Oh no, and when you feed in the hood, they're gonna look out for you. The hood, yeah, the hood will hold you. Oh, no fuck. Question. That's my point, yeah. No question. That was no my question. Point. No, oh no, no, you ain't you ain't playing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like one time I had a little incident, right? I had about I don't know what happened, but I had like ten keys and I was at my mama's house mm -hmm. and the car that we had been keeping them in, the homies needed it. Right. So I take them out in my mama's fence. Mm -hmm. And my, my next door neighbor garage sit right next to each other. So it had a little hole in the middle of it. So I said, I'm going to just throw them in between the fence and the garage mm -hmm. until I get ready for them. So I throw them in between the fence. Mm -hmm. And I'm just chilling, you know. I ain't, I'm mm -hmm. going to go play me some basketball and mm -hmm. to the fellas get back. So my mama called me. She said, hey, uh, Mary say uh, she got your package. Mm -hmm. I say, what? She got my package. <laughs> well, why would you Mary had your package, right? <laughs> yeah. So... What I'm saying is that the neighborhood looked out. She took right. my package and put it in the house. She wow. said, oh, you ain't got to keep it back there. You can yeah. bring it in the house. Wow. And, and this is a lady that's like 70 years old. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So wow. when you taking care of the neighborhood, even though she wasn't making money off of me, right. her, her grandkids was. Okay. And okay. she appreciated what I was doing for her grandkids. Right. And she was showing the love back from that by, you know, making sure my thing was good. Cause that's one thing about, you know, hustling, um, is you can turn you can turn it around if you want. I mean, you can do good with with the bad that you're doing. Like you know, I know so many. Um, uh, Kenny Anderson is from my hood, and I remember. Um, well, he's he's a couple years older than me, but I remember him trying to like you know him having a, a cold streak. Uh, being in college and trying to go to the NBA and him having that cold speaker trying to ask somebody to hustle and every drug dealer was like, no. just just told him to shut the fuck up but then every drug dealer mount, count, uh, anted up and paid for whatever the fuck he needed at that time and he ha he ain't had to do shit. Well, you know the same thing with Lil D. You know Lil D from the Bay Area. Okay. You know, he just got out. Um, I'm the, uh, D the, um, too short in them big homie you talking about. Yeah. Yes, yes, That's my yes. little man. Yes, yes, I mean, yes. you know, he... Yeah, yeah, he, he, he big homie. homie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. me and him met when he was about... Right. Man, he couldn't have been more than 17 I met him at Mr. Fab's store in the Bay Area, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah that's my and man. they told me he, he, he was you or there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> right, right. But the first time they introduced me to him, he was about 17 years old. Right. And uh, one of my boys pulled up in the van, and he's like, been telling me about Lil D. Right. You know, he had been hitting him, but D wanted right. to go directly to me. Right. So uh, uh, he, had, he had connected us, and, uh, and this little dude was like, I right. said, how much money you got, man? Right, right. <laughs> you 17 years old and right. you got a, a million dollars. Right. So, you know, it was like, it didn't matter how old you was. Right. It's just a matter if you had the game to mm. to, 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 to put it down. So, uh, uh, it was just so many ways and so many different dudes that was, was getting their money that I didn't need to go outside of my community. Mm. You know, you got dudes coming throwing down five hundred, six hundred thousand. Mm. So you know, off a of six hundred thousand dollar deal, if I pull a hundred out of that for myself, I'm happy. At one point, you were making more money than Magic, motherfucking Johnson. <laughs> you know when? Uh, How did that feel? When Magic signed his contract, right? Yeah. And they put it in the paper. I think he was getting like 1.2 million. I was like, damn, I'm glad I don't play basketball. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm not gonna lie. You know how hard that statement was. Hey, it was like, that one it was like damn, Holy man. Holy shit. It was like, damn, man, he only gonna make two million dollars <laughs> this what? year. He what? in trouble. Wow. <laughs> wow. That is crazy, man. That is crazy. So now, d- 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 come on, everybody, everybody, if you're whoever's close, come over here. We're going. So you in jail. You probably reading, you doing whatever. And I'm rebuilding. You rebuilding. I'm rebuilding. And I'm um, 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 I'm like, what I did is I got exposed to Farrakhan when I went to jail. Mm, God bless. You know, somebody put me up on him, right? God bless. A couple Muslim brothers was like, man, you don't know about Farrakhan? You don't know about Malcolm X? Right. I ain't never heard of Malcolm X. Mm. I ain't never heard about Farrakhan. Mm. You know, I knew Tookie. Mm-hmm. Right, that's why. Right. The big right. homie. The big homie. You know, Tony yeah. Stacy. Exactly. Cartoon, you know, okay. Big okay. Clinton. Them was my <laughs> right, people. Right, what right, you right. mean? So, uh, this Muslim brother one day, he was like, man, come on, go to service, man. Uh-huh. Uh, you ain't doing nothing today. You know, you ain't right. giving no tennis lessons. Because, you know, that's when my hustle in the joint was giving tennis lessons. Right. Uh, so, I go to service, man, and uh, I see Farrakhan for the first time. In the jail? Yeah. Oh, wow. So, uh, I'm checking him out, man. I'm listening to how he talk. And he's like, oh, the black man is God. Right. The black man can do anything. Right. I'm like, what is this motherfucker talking about? Is he done lost his mind? Right. I'm a dummy. Right, right. I'm, I'm a gangster. You know, right. I'm supposed to sell dope right. all my life. I'm, right. I'm planning on getting back out, you know, right. doing the same thing. Like, I, I just this your first this bit time. or your second bit? This, this the, first? the first bit. Okay. So, uh, I'm checking yeah, him out. Cup. Yeah. You gonna you gonna get me loaded. Nah, it's okay. Happy birthday, nigga. I don't drink. It's okay, man. I don't drink, man. We drinking today. We celebrate your birthday. We celebrate your life. (laughs) Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. again. Listen, we celebrate your birthday. We celebrate your life, and most important, we celebrate your survival. Mm. And I I don't want to cut you off because listen, man. There's black men who get killed every day for doing the for a spectrum of what you did to life, to society, for you to live. I think that that should be celebrated. I think it should be uh, uh, tarnished. I mean, I think it should be a uh, uh, love. I think that, you know, um, every. I, I think that what you're doing is honorable. Because you could have just said, you know what, I did this, I fucked up people's life, and that's it. Right. But you right, out here right. trying to make a fucking change. Oh, like, man, I'm going to make a change. That's motherfucking I'm gonna dope. I'm going to make a change. That's fucking dope. I'm gonna, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to redo the books. You know what I'm saying? You know, that itself is dope. I'm going to redo the books, you know what I'm man. So, but let me ask you, because I, I see, I see what's going there, but let me ask you. So when you first heard hustling, every day I'm hustling, every day I'm hustling, hot, flattered, flattered, and hot. You said that's hot. No, no I he said, said he's hot. I'm hot. Oh, he's hot still, like yeah, me. Hot. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Okay, all right, cool. And flattered. And flattered. At the same time. Okay. So I don't really know that's how a, to feel about this thing. That's dope. So right. I get on the phone and I start calling people and who know this story? Right. You know, because I still got my music. You know, I found alcoholics while I was in prison. Right. Wait, the group the alcoholics? Yeah. Get I'm the fuck out of here. The alcoholics got signed. Wait, hold on. What the fuck? Oh, my God. He's swimming from there. He's swimming from there. You put him down with King T? No, King T put him down with me. Oh. oh. King T was my man. Right. You know, if I'd have listened to King T. If I'd have listened to King T, I'd be the king of hip-hop right now. Wow. I slipped on hip hop. Well, DJ King Poo, T told you he, DJ Pooh and King T tried to get me to do hip hop right before I was doing Anita Baker. But what I did is I went with the dudes with the iron. See, Otis Smith had at that time. Otis had Johnny Taylor, right. Bobby Womack. Wow. And then to convince me to go with him, he took me to Dick Griffey. Wow. Barry Gordy. Wow. And they all say, hip-hop is a fad. Right. Wow. I was tampering with hip-hop. Right. But I didn't get all the way in it because them two, them, them dudes had convinced me that it wasn't going to last. Right. But I had them like this here. Mm. But I didn't know that I should be telling them what to do instead of letting them. But King T is telling you, listen. King T telling me hip-hop is the one. Wow. You know what I'm saying? It, it's crazy. So you would have been the first death row. Listen really? To this here. Really? Listen to this here, man. Well, first, well, first I go to this house. Listen to this here. I go to this house. I go uh-huh. to this house, right? Uh-huh. Pooh. Pooh stays at one of my girls' house sometimes. You know, I got like... DJ Pooh we talk I got about. like four girls, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And I stay house, 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 house. Right, so, right. you know, when the girls ain't... When I ain't there, they bring one of their little cousins over or somebody. And, 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 and you know, keep them company. Right. 
So, <laughs> my one girl. This nigga said the illest. <laughs> this nigga <laughs> said the illest. <laughs> so, my one girl, okay. her little cousin is a group who's called Madcap, mm -hmm. who's the first group on Lyle Records. Yeah, I know. Um, that was her little cousin. Her other cousin was a, a, another little dude named Teo, who. Who, who DJ Poohin was like this. Wow. So they would be at my house all the time. I would come over, they'd be in there making beats, blah, 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 beating on the table and all right. that shit. And they'd be like, man, you ought to do Poo's record. You right. know, he finna work with LL Cool J and right. he's doing this and he's doing that. And so right. I said, ah, oh, you know, maybe, maybe. Because you're the financier of the hood. You got, obviously, obviously. I got the bread. You got the bread. I got more so, bread yeah, than yeah, I can yeah, spend. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't right. know what to do with all the bread I got. Right. It's hard to hide this shit. <laughs> <laughs> we putting one dollar bills in people's garages and they cutting holes in the back of the garage and, and taking the safe out. Wow. wow. So, uh, Pooh takes me over to this house. Uh -huh. And I go in this uh, well, apartment, wasn't a house, it was uh -huh. an apartment. So I go in this apartment and it's like 40 motherfuckers in there. They laying mm -hmm. all over the floor, it look worse than my crack houses. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what the fuck going on here? Is this what y'all, they got wires everywhere and turntables. Mm -hmm. I'm like, fuck. So when I leave, no, I'm debating, should I mess with the motherfuckers with the high rises? Right. In Beverly Hills, Otis Smith, right. Dick Griffey, right. or should I mess with these young motherfuckers, right. 17 years old, who tell me he need 200,000. Right. Otis just tell me he need six. I already gave him the 600. Right. So now I, I'm debating, should I give Pooh 200? Right. See, if Pooh would have told me he needed 40,000 to do an album, which is right. what, what a rap album was costing at the time, right. I would have gave it to him. Right, he was trying to go big, though. He was trying to go big, right. and I just gave Otis 600. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I ain't ready to put this kind of music, um, this kind of money into the music industry right now. And now is N.W.A. out yet? They're well, not out yet. They're not out yet. Oh, I, I can see where you're coming from. So I'll just, go meet Drake when I get out of prison. Get the fuck out of here. This is the first time you get out of prison. No, right now. Okay. This, like, like eight okay. years ago. Okay. The first okay. time I go okay. and meet Drake in person. Okay. I talked to Drake when I was in jail, but uh -huh. I never met him. Uh -huh. So I go to his house about five, six years ago. Right. Right before we was doing Cracking the System. Right. Because Dre had told me when I was in jail he was going to do a soundtrack. Right. He said, whatever you do, I'm going to do the soundtrack for you. So I go over to his house and we're talking about doing the soundtrack. He was like, Rick, you don't remember that house? Right. I said, yeah, I remember I came over there. He said, I was in that house wow. the day that you came by. Oh, with DJ Poo or no? Wow. So when it, when it hit me, it was like, oh, fuck. Right. You had an opportunity. You was ahead of it. Right. To have Dr. Dre at that time. and right. and. Uh, really, I had to hold, because I had Otis Smith and Dick Griffey was the first right. distributors. Wow. They was the first independent distributors of black music. Yeah. Uh, Dick Griffey negotiated Suge's deal with mm. Interscope. Mm. I don't know if you know that. Mm -hmm. He negotiated that, that deal with Suge. Too. Me and Harry were sellies uh. when they started Death Row. That's when they first, first started. When they first started Death Row. Yeah. I met Suge the day Harry met Suge. Wow. I was in the same room with... with the day before Suge got in, me and Harry O, David Kennedy were sitting in a, uh, uh, the attorney booth. Yeah. And Harry O told, told David Kenner, I'm gonna make you more money in the music business than you ever made as an attorney. Wow. I was sitting in that room when he told him that. And this is in jail? We was in jail, yeah, right. we was in MDCLA, wow. downtown. Wow, wow, wow. Well, you know, Harry O had been in, in, in Pelican Bay, which is considered, uh, it's like, Solitary confinement, right. where, where all you got to do is read books, read newspapers. That's really the high profile. Uh, uh, maximum security. Yeah, maximum that's security. where they put like the worst of the worst. Right. You know, dudes who can't uh, who can't walk the line. Right. Uh, uh, too violent. Too much pool. You know, right. they don't want you getting no mail. Right. They don't want you talking to nobody. You don't get no right. visits. And why they? Well, you ain't go there. I didn't go to the state. I went to the field. Oh, that's right. That's right. You know, Harry that's went right. to the state because he had a. Uh, uh, a kidnap, right. attempted murder. So, um, all right, so now back back to Rick Ross, right? So back to, I'm sorry, the rapper Rick Ross, right? So the first time- William Roberts. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but, but, but real quick though, before yeah. Rick Ross, did Freeway come to you first? <laughs> no, no, no. No? No, no, I, I, well, let me, let me, let me, let me, it's cause Freeway, even though he came out before Rick Ross, I feel like Rick Ross was more, uh, that meant more to you. I, no, yeah, but I just want to know timeline-wise, had Freeway already come to you? Mm -mm. He didn't come to me either. Oh, okay, oh, okay, so all right, so okay. let's take it from there. All right, so you're in you're in jail, obviously. Uh, you're here. Um, every day I'm hustling. Yeah. 
which is something that you can relate to. Absolutely, that was my saying. And then, did, did you know that when these people played this record, this artist's name was Rick Ross? Or did you, you knew that yeah. prior to listening to I, I knew to? before the record came out. Oh, wow. Uh, um, you know, in jail, we was, mm -hmm. I was studying the music business. Because right. I, I had solved my mistake. Right. You know, I'm, I'm like in there like, right. Right. You know, you dumb right. motherfucker. What right. the fuck was you thinking about? Mm. You you had you had it in your hands. Mm. How did you how did you let this get out your hands? Right. So, I'm in jail networking. You know, and talking you had to a, Wendy Day. And people had already told you there's an artist coming out named Rick Ross. The magazines. Oh. Right. The Damn. magazines before you ever hit. You know, we get all the magazines. See, we didn't, we didn't, and us in New York, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't hear Rick Ross till we actually heard the actual Well, record. we, you know, we yeah, had, I mean, yeah, yeah, Miami, I, 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 he just said, you study it. The magazines, so, what was that magazine that was coming out of the South? Uh, Ozone. 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 Julia Beverly, big up. Julia yeah. Beverly, yeah. she loved him. Right. That right. was her boy. Right, right. You know, she blew him up. Every mm -hmm. chance she got, she, mm -hmm. I think they might have been fucking. What? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> that's how we thought in jail. Oh, okay, we thought okay. they was fucking. Right, 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 right. That's how she was on okay, his nutsack. Okay, okay, okay. So, so, but at first, at first, every day you hustling, it's a great record. Amazing no record. Great record. Great record. Great record. No great record. Every hustler had to had to love that. Record. Had to love that. And then this is this is why I'm involved because in the record he says I know Pablo Noriega, the real Noriega. So I, he's trying to. This is the. He, I think, in my opinion, this is the reason why I didn't take that line never personal. And I, when I first met him, he told me it was it wasn't like that. But um, what he was trying to imply that he was like your status, correct? Correct. But have you ever dealt with? Pablo no. or Noriega? No. What, what he did uh, is he switched it up because he didn't want, I mean, you know, he wasn't, I, you, I spoke to him when I was in jail. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, I had, I had a phone call with him and he had a meltdown. Before mm. the record or after the record came out? That record. Before the record. Wrestling. Okay. Right. Because he was, at, at this time, he was, when I first found out about him, he was just doing the magazines. And he was writing for, he was on Slip and Slide, he was writing for Trina. No, 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 up. he was getting ready, his album was yeah. getting ready to come out. He mm -hmm. was getting ready to put an album out, but he was, you know, before before the album or the record comes out, they, they do the magazines first. Right, right, right. You know, you're doing the Ozone, the, the XXL. Yeah, yeah. The Word Ups. Yeah, all the that. Word Ups. Yeah, Wrap Up Magazine, yeah. So I see him in the magazines, and I'm like, well, what the fuck? I know somebody got to know this dude. Right. I know too many people. Right. So I'm hitting all my boys. Boom, 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 boom. So one of my boys, he write for Smooth Magazine. Okay. He said, oh, yeah, he'll be here Monday at 9 o'clock. Right. I'll put you on the phone with him. So my boy... I called him, my boy put him on the phone. He don't know it's me. Right. My boy just handing the phone. Yeah, man, right. somebody wanna holler at you. Right. So he get on the phone, I holler at him. He, oh, man, he don't know. He think he's been set up. Right. Oh, big homie, he ain't got his bodyguards right. by himself. Right. Oh, big homie, I love you. Right. Uh, you know, just like jacking me off. Right. Hard. Right. <laughs> so I say, um, I say, look, man, I got some ideas for us. Right. We can do this thing together. You don't have to be me. Right. You can just be my supporter. Right. Um, okay, okay, I'm gonna come to see you, and right. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. Right. So I called him like one more time after that, and uh, he put his guy Poochie on the phone. Okay. And uh, they said, send us a visiting form. So I sent him the visiting form, they never fill the form out. Next thing I know, the number was changed, and uh, Okay. That was the end of our conversations. Did you think that's where it went wrong? Because obviously, it's, because obviously you had to feel flattered. Like me personally, I, I as a person who's a rapper, right? And um, I, I wanted to just just show you the the, um, the similarities in my situation. I had never, I had never chose the name Noriega. I was actually in jail reading a book about Noriega, and the shit was so thick. People, niggas in the, in the child line, I was like, you nigga, you ain't reading that shit. And just like playfully grab the book from me, or knock down or something, and they 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 started reading, and then whatever they asked me on that page, I had knew it. So right. people just nicknamed me Noriega. Right, I understand. Right? No, no doubt. So I had I still didn't go by the name of Noriega. Um, so I came home from jail. When I came home from jail, Capone had came to see me, which his name was not Capone in jail. Um, but and he he kept calling me Noriega. So people in my hood thought it was funny. So they was like, oh, we call this nigga Noriega too. We call him Noriega too. But in retrospect, I reached out to Noriega's family because I knew how it could be, you know, took in the wrong way. Right, right. So when I reached out and I couldn't get 
the actual um, contact that I wanted or someone that was, you know, valuable to talk about it, what I did was I changed my name to Nori. Right. And, and, and I totally get that. Okay. Because I never named myself Freeway. Right. Okay. I grew up on the side of the freeway. Okay. And when we started low riding, we started low riding, it was a dude who was like the king of low riding at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of my little partner was banging his wife. Uh -huh. <laughs> he didn't like it. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we like a lot of people don't like that. We're like 18 years old, he like 25, 30, you know okay, what I'm saying? Okay, okay. And, and an 18 year old banging his wife. Right. So he find out that my boy banging his wife. So right. he like, oh, you junkie ass freeway boys. And right. he, it was an insult. Oh. Freeway used to be an insult. Wow. Like, you didn't want to be no freeway boy. Wow. Uh, uh, that's why I was asking you didn't read the article about my obituary. Oh, okay. You missed no. that one. You, yeah, I missed that you one. You got to read that article. It's, okay. it's LA Magazine. Uh, this dude came to visit me at the prison when I had my life sentence, and uh -huh. he called himself writing my obituary. He wrote for the LA Times. Oh. And he was saying that this was going to be the last time that he ever wrote about me. Oh, mm. okay, okay. So, Damn, in this yeah, article, I that one. Okay. he talked about being a junkie-ass freeway boy. Uh, and that's what they felt about us because our cars was raggedy, they smoked, they shook. Uh, you know what I'm saying? The seats was torn up. I didn't up. catch that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I understand totally what you're saying about right. somebody giving you a name. So how do how, how you think you and Ross could have uh, uh, avoided what y'all had? Oh, we would have both been huge right now. Mm. I mean, I would have gave him the freedom. He would have never got into it with the GDs mm. if he'd have been messing with me. Right. Him and the GD product never would have happened because right. I would have been able to handle that right, right. off the rip. You know, right. I would have took care of it. That's Larry Hoover's? Larry people? Hoover. Okay. I would have knew how to, to navigate through those situations. I mean, I had ideas for him. When we talked, the first time we talked, he was getting ready to do a show. Mm -hmm. I said, listen, man, let me give you a tip. Look what you do. Right. When you get ready to do your show, the next show you do, let me call in. Right. Let him hear. This is before most people ever heard the federal prison. This is a call from a federal wow. correctional institution. Wow. This is Ricky Ross. Right. I said, listen, if you do that on the phone, right. you take my call, you let the whole audience hear you talking to me, uh. they're going to love you. Uh. And he didn't get it. He didn't understand how much more that would have solidified right. his authenticity of, of being somebody from the hood, right? You know, and and it was tips like that that I had for me and him that we could have did, but like I said, he didn't really understand. I, I think he was more concerned with me discrediting his credibility. Mm. You know, if it's a real Rick Ross, right? Then why are you Rick Ross? Right. You know, and I think that his people started to put that in his ear that he couldn't align himself with me. It would be impossible for him to align himself with me because then it would discredit. But this is a real Noriega, and I, I always show love to the Noriega family. But see, I, you can think for yourself. Right. You, you, you know who right. you are, what you stand for, when you don't really understand that. It's like me. If I didn't know who I was, right. I wouldn't be walking the street right now. Like, I'm, I'm doing a movie right now. Mm. So, so, hold on, let's make some noise for that. Make noise for that. So go ahead, go ahead. We got 11 million in the bank. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? We're going to start shooting, hopefully, February. We got the script doctor. Right. So working with the script doctor, we we, we we doing the script right now, tightening everything up, making uh -huh. everything tight. So me and him was talking the other day. I said, I said, man, Kush, man, we got to do another movie right now. As right. soon as this movie is done, right. we got to do another movie with me making all the wrong choices. Mm. Like every time one of the little homies went to kill a motherfucker, right. I said, go ahead. Right. And he pulled the trigger. Bam! Right. How would my life had have been so much different if I couldn't be strong enough to where these dudes get into it that I didn't have the power to say, hold up, man, don't pull that trigger. Right. Don't you shoot him. Right. Give him a pass. Let him walk away. Right. It would have been a whole lot different. But some people don't have the power or the strength to say, don't do it. They more worried about, oh, they're going to look at me like I'm soft. If you don't do it. If right. you don't do right. it. Mm -hmm. But me, what I did is I was like, okay, you kill him. Okay. I, I'm, in the movie. This, this, the movie. this movie's going to be uh, about But this is what I should tell my guys. Right. Yeah, because I don't want nobody to see a clip of this and then be like, whoa, hold up. 
<laughs> this is, this, this right is what I should tell my guys, <laughs> right? I said, all right, we're going to kill him. Mm -hmm. We're going to kill him. Right. That 300000 he owed, you think we're going to get that back? Mm. When you kill him? Mm. Any chance of us getting that back? Mm. No, ain't no chance. Mm. Okay, that's cool. We don't get the money back, but we probably ain't going to get it back no way. Mm. What if the police start the investigation? Right. Okay, they arrest us. They ain't really got the evidence and they arrest us all, right? right. We all go to jail. We got to bail out. How much that's going to cost us? How much Alan Fincher charge every time he do a case? Thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars. Everybody that he touch, you know, he don't touch you if you, you know, yeah. talking about thirty, forty, fifty. Right. I see. So it's six of us. So you know, we talking about three hundred thousand. So we already done blew that three hundred right. already. Right. Jesus. We we done we done we done chunked that three hundred. That three hundred done turned into nine. So I was able to take my guys and explain to them that you don't throw good money at the bad money. Mm. Sometimes you gotta walk away and say, you know what, that was my bad. You know, I should have knew. Uh, I, I have a motto that, that I go by is that I don't give people something I can't afford to give them. Mm. If I give it to you, I can afford to lose it. To lose it, meaning you give a nigga a loan for 100000 If he don't pay you yeah, back, yeah. Okay. He, you know, that's, it was all good. But what's the difference between, like, Freeway taking a name and Rick Ross taking a name? Because between them both, they got both of you. <laughs> like, <would> you <laughs> yeah, they got the whole, the whole hey, of you. And you know they're not the only ones. We got Rich out of, out of Kansas City, Freeway Rich. Oh, oh no, I you didn't know Rich? that. You ain't never heard of Rich. Damn, I told that one went over my head. Rich is, Rich is hard. Okay, okay. He's he more I'm like on. Kansas City, St. Right. Louis, okay. the Bay Area. Okay, I, I, think, I think I did. Hard. Yeah. Well, okay. Hard. I'll okay. go to Kansas City, he set it out for me. But, but, but that's the difference. Freeway? They set it out for you. Okay. You know, they, they show you. Even though none of them gave me no money. Right. None right. of them ain't gave me no money. Right. You know, ain't nobody came and said, you know what, I'm gonna throw a show for you. Right. You know, right. you, you my you my motherfucker. Right. You know what I'm saying? I love you to death. Right. You know, I got your name tattooed right. on my hand. Right. That's right. how much I love you. Right. None of them didn't do that. Right. But, but at least when I come to town, they right. come out. Right. We sit down, we talk. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's like right. we got a relationship right. with with old boy. He deliberately lied to me about us building a relationship. Mm. I was more concerned about us building a relationship than 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 some money. So I, I knew. When, See, so, so I knew when they bust some doors. Yeah, yeah. When they bust some doors, right. I said, if anybody out there got money, I'm gonna get some of it. Right. <laughs> Ain't no way y'all gonna have no right. money and I don't get none of it. But do you think that's why he was kind of scared? Maybe, maybe the one point you said is. Um, like you said, this is the real Rick Ross. But you think he was kind of scared that if, if um, he's kind of scared of a, uh, of a lawsuit or, or a extortion type of we thing? Did, we did do a lawsuit. Yeah, no, no, and oh, I'm sure he was. Oh, I'm, but, but prior I'm to the sure, lawsuit, he's I'm probably sure thinking, probably like, thought about you that. know, this guy's a big drug dealer. You know, um, is he's going to come and extort me? Because you know so, they get extorted in L.A. So, 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 so uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, there's a lot of rappers that... The extortion game is good. That you know, goes in L.A., LA yeah, do that. Yeah, in L.A. But so, I ain't never been with the extortion game. You know, But but you can see how he can misconstrue that though. Can you see? I'm just, I'm just trying to be I mean, devil's you could, advocate. But, but you're yeah. still supposed to know who you're dealing with. Exactly. And that's what, that's what really fucked me up about the whole game right now. With mm -hmm. all these motherfuckers with money. Right. All of them that got money right now. Right. I don't respect them. Right. I don't right. give a fuck. And and, and and ain't that I'm a hater. Mm -hmm. But they don't understand the mind. You know, even even with right. Floyd. You know, Floyd picked me up from the halfway house and. Right. All I wanted from Floyd was to put me around the game. Right. See, because I know if he put me around the game, right. I'm going to figure the motherfucker out. Right. I don't care what game it is. Right. You put me in jail, I'm going to learn how to read, I'm going to learn how to do the law. Woo. I was doing other people law. I don't got dudes out of prison. I don't got them bail. When the lawyer say, you ain't getting no bail, I show them how to do bail. Right. I show them how to go, oh, look at this here. The judge, the judge only got two ways that he can depart from the guidelines. Mm. Huh? Well, what ways can he depart? Cooperate with the government. Wow. A post-conviction rehabilitation. So if you go to an AA class, you start taking drug classes before you go to court, before you get convicted, they're going to challenge that as post-conviction rehabilitation. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. the judge can give you any amount of time that he wants. I just gave somebody the game the other day. They called me crying. Oh, my niece, she finna go to jail. She... I said, why you didn't call me when she first got arrested? Mm. 
Right. I said, you my girl. I would have gave you this shit for free. Right. I said, look, what she got to do? Go get an AA, do this, do that, do that. Now the judge going to be able to depart from the guidelines. Mm. And if you don't study the law, if you ain't in tune, you ain't going to know this. Mm. But that was my game. I got in tune. Mm. I knew how to get bail. Mm. I knew how to, I couldn't get myself out because my case was so right. enormous, you know. Like, it was guys in there that were so cold, but they couldn't get their self out because their case was so horrendous you know what i'm saying they mm. killed three or four motherfuckers and they're not finna let you out right but no matter how smart you get in the law you're not getting out right but they knew how to do the law and that's what i had did when i was in there i had studied basically what i did is i started studying the law the way i sold dope mm. i loved it you loved the I law i love selling dope when oh. i sold dope I loved it. I was willing to die for it. I was willing to kill for it. I mean, when it was a time that they was like, oh man, well, uh, they talking about they're going to kidnap you. I said, shit. Who, other brother. drug dealers? Just, there was a word on the street, you okay. know. I mean, you know, I'm running around with two, three million yeah, dollars every money day. that he's making. Right. I'm running around with two, three million in duffel bags. I got two, three dudes carrying my duffel bags with right. money in it. Right. So the word is out there, they're going to kidnap me. So I put on my bulletproof vest, I put my pistol in my pocket, and I was like, let's do it, you know? But I'm gonna be equipped, you know right. what I'm saying? Right. At this time, motherfuckers ain't even wearing bulletproof vests at this time. Right. This is like early right. in the game, you know, right. we go get the, the bulletproof vest that the, the 45 bullet won't go through. Right. Because I'm always trying to be up on the latest and the greatest. Like I know if I'd have been home, you know, my man, he was telling me about how he invested in Bitcoin. I was like, fuck. Oh. Well, we're not is home. Bitcoin working or is it not? For some people. It's, it's still there. It's still there. It's, it's still a long-term yeah. investment. You already know we back in Drink Champs. And listen, right now, we have the king of crack cocaine. And we have the, the, uh, the son of the queen of cocaine. This is crazy! <laughs> Mikey, what's going on, brother? Make some noise! That Miami family, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. King Dove family. Griselda. Uh, and you, you got a show out right now. Yes, matter of yeah. fact, I do. Cartel. Um, I, well, Cartel crew. I'm, I'm two episodes in. Um, um, I'm two episodes in, I believe. And yeah, that's the, that's the clothing line. Yeah, Pure Blanco. Yeah. So um, tell me how it is growing up in the house of Griselda. How's it going, growing up, Blanco? <clears throat> Blanco. I, I think Free can vouch for it. I mean, a lot of people want to throw, you know, a little pizzazz on the things and over-exaggerate, but when it came down to it, it let's say The Sopranos, right. it was the Blanco house, you know? Wow. It was business on the street, but no guns at the table. Wow. Don't say nothing crazy in front of the kid. Wow. Bodyguards right. stay there. They come eat with us, but no guns on the table, and uh, Mama was a strict one. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Sent you to school, everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like, you know, it's yeah. like, like people like, you know, like waking up and mom's just like, hey, go pick this bob bag of coke over here. No, not at it's all. not like that. It's just, no. it's just taking you to, yeah. I mean, in my later years, as I got older, you know, they had to do little things, but I never right. would my mother put me in arm's way. And you was right. the youngest of, of three, right? <clears throat> yeah, I'm the baby. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Wow. Did you ever think of that, that your, your, some of your babies would grow up, like, and eventually live, like, the lifestyle? Yeah, Is yeah. It, uh, well, you know, I, I had two sons that uh, were well, really three that that took the gangster lifestyle. Oh, I did. Oh, I definitely did. Yeah, yeah. I got I got three sons that been to jail. Oh wow. Uh, they go hard. You oh, know what I'm saying? I, I was just with one of his sons. Yeah, yeah. He was just with one of my sons who just got out of prison. Matter of fact. God, yeah. yeah. I didn't even know that. And you know, I oh. I knew of his mom back oh. in the day. Mama oh. Coca. Yeah, I wanted to ask if there was any like cross. Well, you know, uh, uh, the Nicaraguans used to talk about her. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. They used to so she ended up it. in Cali, right? What, they used to call her Mama Coca, and she knew of him, and they yeah. knew the same people. Wow. So they probably sold weight to the same people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, I'm sure that, that my guys was getting it from her at times. Right. Wow. Because they, they definitely talked. I mean, you know, they was getting it from uh, the Choa brothers, right. uh, Escobar, right. and his mom. Right. You ever seen all Ochoa bros? Oh, of course. My brother, Chiqui Blanco, was the prodigy of wow. Pablo and Luz Ochoa. Wow. And um, he was the baby. He was their prodigy. When he jumped out of doing his seven years in the feds, right. he stayed at their house. Wow. A week and a half later, sent 400. Wow. wow. And I, I heard you say in the, um, the reality show that you'll never go back to Colombia. 
As much as I would love to see loved ones and everything, I can't. I got an asylum in this country. <clears throat> like, you got a what? An asylum. It's called the Convention Against Torture. Oh, shit, I don't even know what that so means. You I'm can't, sorry. You can't go sorry. back or you... I can't. You can't? Because yeah. of, of that, asylum. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, because of that and because I choose not to, I gave up that life, you know? Right. And I mean, to that, me, that's what made the show even more real. I was watching it with my yeah. girl, that part, <laughs> and I was like, this is where I think this is not a regular reality show because Taco City. if you would have yeah. gone there, I would have been like, ah. That's but bullshit. But it, it shows how real it is because it's still fresh. Well, you know me. You know. Yeah, yeah, your mom's, this is, this is kind of recent. In real talk, this yes, is your, your mother passed away not that long ago. In reality, she yeah. Was assassinated. Yeah, my what, brothers 2012? were. Twenty yeah. twelve. My brothers were assassinated in nineties, two thousand and one. Imigodita, twenty twelve. Right. When they show him, bro. Wow, wow. God bless, man. I, I'm not gonna lie. When I watch Cocaine Cowboys, the same way I watch, um, you know, um, um, Ray Rick Ross shit. It's like, um, the, the level of that lifestyle. I just, I, I just couldn't see that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, I sold drugs, but I've never was on that level, like that level at all. But like, um, that that level of, like, like I heard, I heard you say um, that you, if a person stole from you, you just wouldn't work with them no more. Yeah, yeah, it was, like it was, it thing. was cheaper for me not to work with them. I mean, right. um, to kill them. Or to 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 use my powers. I mean, you you got to be careful because you become a bully. Right. Mm. You can start bullying people around. You know, mm. you got. It's probably easier to become a bully. Probably. It is easy. I mean, yeah. you got you got. At one time, I had like all of the shot callers damn near in L.A. Right. All the black shot callers up under one card. You know, right. like. And for the people that don't know, I could call Hancho run the streets. Like, I could call Hancho, yeah. who right. was like the one of the founders of Gray Street. Like, right. hey, Hunch, I need you. I could call Big U. Mm -hmm. A big cat from the 60s, you know, mm -hmm. Putin, mm -hmm. T. Rogers from the Bloods. Mm -hmm. These were all like my dudes, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, right now, we still like, like right. this here. If they got it, I can get it, right. you know? Uh, uh, so when, when, when you're in that position, you have to be really particular about what your, what your uh, uh, decisions are. Now, your mom's was like the exact opposite. If she, like, if, if she got a hat missing. Yeah. It's, it's, oh. it's, it's, <laughs> I yeah, mean, yeah. according to the documentary you nah, saw, nah. I mean, he could tell us what real. I watched that documentary like 1,500 times. Somewhat, I mean, he could tell us exactly yeah. what My mother had a saying, yeah. and she yeah. taught me this when I was a kid, that it doesn't matter if it's $100 or $100,000, it's right. the principle. Yeah. Right. So, right. yeah, I've heard little stories that were, whoa, wow, Cause, she did cause that. Because how old was you like when, when she was like in the, like in the type, like the like, high days, the high days. When my mother got incarcerated, I was turning seven years old. Wow, okay. My brothers turned, my brothers were all arrested and indicted when I was seven for the biggest money laundering case in California state history. My brother was uh, 19 years old. He was worth a hundred million dollars already. Wow. He was worth, he was a uh, Los Ochoa's prodigy. Rick knows right. Chiqui Blanco, Chiqui Blanco. Right. Handle the Bay Area, Beverly Hills, a lot. Right. They dealt with a lot of, uh, I would say, um, my brother Chico was the first Colombian to deal with the Afro Americans on the East Coast. Wow. And my mother was the Queen of Queens, you know. Right. That. Oh, yeah, that's right. We, we had this conversation. getting it from Gazelda, goddammit. Yeah. In Jackson Heights, yeah. goddammit. Yeah. Yeah. It's making noise for that, <laughs> <laughs> Prices dropped crazy, and we knew something. We were like, who the hell is over there? Yeah. I kid you not. I mean, we used to go uptown, and they used to, uh, you know, prices are so crazy, even then your moms moved over there. It was, it, it was right. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So, um, I so no, 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 cause um, what made you do the reality show? What is this is VH1's idea? <clears throat> well, you know, I've been in the business for a minute. When I right. met you, gentlemen, thank right. you to see you right. guys do what you've done. I congratulate right. you. Uh, right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Ten you. years ago, you guys right. gave me my yeah. first interview. Yeah, yeah. 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 military yeah. crazy right. Right. Yeah. 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 So, what made you do the reality show? Because I started getting into the business back then. I was CFN okay. where my partner Magic was in the music Big business. Magic. What helped me get into the business? <clears throat> John Gotti, Bugsy Siegel. You know, they oh. did it right. right. Back then, I saw, we grew up on hip hop. We grew right. up on you, you know? Right. You know what? We grew mm. up on some mob shit of right. these guys becoming, metamorphosizing into these legal entities, Jay-Z, Damon mm. Dash. Right. So when you grow up in that era and you see, damn, these boys talking about the dope that Ross sold. Right. These boys talking about my mom and Pablo, right. but they look like dope dealers. Damn, I live that lifestyle, yeah. Right. But they don't gotta worry about the Jack Boys, the criminals, the FBI, the DA. Right. Damn, I wanna be just like Jay-Z. I wanna be like that guy. Right now, he you see he, you see what he talked about Rick Ross, right? Yeah. Uh, um, you see how he felt. Yeah. Right now, there's actually Griselda Records. Oh, 
Tons, name it. No, there's an actual records yeah, yeah, yeah. label called. Yeah, yeah. there's other records. Called Shady Records. Exactly. I heard about they, it. They, uh, yeah. uh, uh, Get Benny. What is it? Uh, ben, Benny Blanco. Uh, West Side Bush. Gun. Benny the Butcher. Benny the Butcher. Benny the Butcher. Yeah. Who is Conway? Right. Yeah. Uh, I now, heard this stuff. You heard how he feels. Yeah. Like I would. Okay, you knew me before. Yes. When I was a criminal, and you knew me when I was about my shit. I would have took a different route. Right. But I would expect it with this gentleman, a legend. I'm not a legend. I'm claim to be. Right. But I'm from the streets. Right. So I would have loved and appreciated. Yo, hey, Mike, can I rap with you? Can I hang with you? Can, can we politic about this? Yeah. Can I get my bike? Now, in his approach, his approach, he yeah. said, he said, he reached out. He reached out. They spoke. And he said that he felt like the lines was... was how would you go about that? They sh he should have never had to reach out. They should have reached out to him. That's how you, you feel. I mean? like, yeah, so yeah. me too. I respect that. Yeah. I'm going to keep that. it legit because that's what yeah, I do that's now. Real. Right. I want to I, I mean, that's real talk. Yeah. I mean, if, 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 honestly, if, I if somebody did something like for me, yeah. if somebody did me a legend. favor, yeah. if somebody did me a favor, I'm going to reach out and, 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 right. and pay him back. You know right. what I'm saying? As soon as I get a chance. Right. You know, we, we, right. we, we, we don't take from the well and never put back, you know. Right. Otherwise, pretty soon the well gonna be dry. Mm. We gotta always put back. Right. Well, this could be the platform where they reach out to you and maybe right. you and Ross can you figure it out as well. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. You know what I think? Me knowing, like, like both of you guys, I just feel like the communication. Oh, you know him? Yeah, I know him. I know him. I, I don't yeah, know him well him. enough, but I know him enough to know that I don't think he meant hot malice. I think. I oh, think, no, 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 no. I think he got I never nervous. said that. Yeah. He, he loves me to death. Yeah, I think he listen, does. I listen think he does. This I think no, he does. Yeah, yeah. Listen, right. like, yeah. you tattoo a motherfucking name on your hands. Right. You right. love that motherfucker. Right, 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 right. <laughs> right. I right him on. I respect that. I mean, that. if you look at his fist. Right. I saw him in a magazine. He was like this here. He had my right. name tattooed on his hand. Right. I said, man, this motherfucker in love with me. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think, I don't think he The only thing he probably mad about, he can't marry me. Right. <laughs> but he loved me. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. Right. So, because you know what? I think that's how it starts. I think, you know what it is? So many black of us, we, we call ourselves Escobar, right? Or oh, we call ourselves Gotti, right? And then, or oh, we call ourselves the Gambino family, and then we we'll realize that the Gambino family don't even like black people, right? And and like you know what I'm saying. So so this is the first time. This is uh, giving both of y'all brothers. This is the first time people from our culture is actually emulating, big, emulating our own culture. So that I, if that's the one thing that's good about. No, it, I respect that. That's the one thing that's good about I it. At least he's that. praising a black, another black. No man. doubt, no doubt. You know what I'm saying? And that's the one thing. It, like no, no matter how, how you feel about it, it's like at least they're praising someone no, from our culture. Like Griselda no, it would be hip hop if she was alive right now. She, best Lil Kim would want Griselda in the video yeah. if she was yeah. alive. Yeah. That's real yeah. shit. That's real. What's up? I see your wife. Remember. Uh -huh. When she said, leaving the federal building, the black right. widow called me Miss White. Come on, and so I heard that. To tell I'm you. Like, like, so. I love that. So, in defense of. Uh, but, friend, in no, defense. no, 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 but I understand that. Yeah. And I don't have no problems with that. Right. But I'm that. Like, let's do something together. Yeah, I feel let's you. Break now, if, if, if it's really. It, I feel you. And, and it really is that way. I feel you. I mean, if we're going to keep it real, we can be like Donald Trump mm -hmm. and everything is what it ain't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What he said it is is what it is and what it said it ain't, it ain't. Right. Me, be, me being an outsider looking in, I could tell that he, he wanted to do the right thing, but I felt like he, he got, he got railroaded. It's, like, it's just like this. It's just like this. You know what I did when I reached out to Noriega's fan? I just did. I didn't it. even know you reached out. Yeah, to Yeah, I actually family. did because I actually wanted him in the video. I'm doing it in the video. Like, <laughs> How are you gonna get him in the video? Oh, he was in Remember, he was in fucking about? Kindle. He was in Kindle. Yeah, like you wasn't gonna get him. I was, video, gonna get, I was gonna get permission. I was trying everything I could do. We shot the the one video yeah, in the one video. I, 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 oh, I sparked the, the idea. So I sparked the idea. But right down my south. thing yeah. was to let him know, like, yo, I'm not tarnishing your name. It was uh, Baroom, and I, I never spelt it the same. You know, his his name is spelled N O R E I E A G E E E E I E. No, uh, his is I E, and yours is E A. Mine's no N O R E A. Hey, we're all yeah. spelling everything. But, yeah, right so yeah. I wanted them to know, and I wanted, you know, like whatever, like if yeah. I could help out, I, you know what I'm saying, something, like, because I wanted them to know I'm not trying to tarnish your name, and in fact, I'm actually keeping your name alive. No doubt, and, and I and I recognize that. Right. I right. recognize what he's done for my name, but right. at the same time, see, I want to exercise some power. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And he could have allowed me to right. exercise that power. 
quicker. Now I'm okay. finna exercise my power. They finna fill me in in another couple months. Right. They finna know right. that this mind is the same mind that right. that that took $125 well, and my partner had 125 and we built a three million dollars every now and then empire, but a million dollars every single day. Right. Real shit. I'm getting ready to implement that again. Real shit. But he could have escalated that. I could have been doing that six years ago. In, in a perfect world, what, 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 what would you, what, in a perfect world, right? You came home. He you gave know. me a job. He said, come on, man, we're going to go talk to your PO. I'm going to tell your PO that you're going to be working with me. That I'm legit. I ain't got no criminal record. That's Cause, real. Because, you know, he didn't have no criminal record. I interviewed him <laughs> for the lawsuit. I interviewed him downtown. And, oh. and they said, oh, uh, you ever been to jail? And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, what did you go to jail for? Uh, a marijuana one time. Right. So he had a clean record. My PO would have let me run with him. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. It, it wouldn't have been like, oh, we don't want you hanging with him. But it, now, now, just be endeavor advocate. What if he was like, what if the position that he could have offered you was something that he would have thought was beneath Yeah, he maybe thought it was. I didn't have no position that was beneath me. You know what I told myself when I was getting out? True, but listen, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. Let me just, let me just, let me just Go cut ahead. you off. Being Go ahead, I'm going to tell you, and then I'm going to break some because games you. Because you know why? You know why? This is why a lot of people are sometimes be scared to do something for the street guy because they don't want to offer him a position where you're kind of like a soldier like when, you were, when you were a right. boss. And this. So just, yeah. a lot, that's why a lot of street guys can't convert is because the person that's trying to put them on knows that or feels that these guys are more of a wolf than them. But no, they put him in a position. Right. I'm going to I'm gonna have to stop you. Okay, please, you just stop me. You done, you done did your research on me. Yes. You know how I carry it. Yeah, but what if he did? But he was supposed to know me. He had studied me, uh, Noah. I, I respect that. He had studied me. All right. He he used my, my sayings in, 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 in music. So yeah. he knew who I was. Yeah, but, but, but in all due respect, you could have still been a killer. <laughs> like... You could have still been a killer. He's just he, like Noah, he had researched me. But the difference between no, he had researched me. He read yeah. my cases. He read my cases. He read all the articles. Yeah, he had watched all the all the documentaries. Right. See, he knew about me before everybody else did. No, I agree. I agree. But what if what if you know a person who's not used to dealing with a person of that caliber is he just made the wrong move? Well, we know he we know he had never dealt with street dudes. Right. You know, I know I know he had credit cards in high school. Right. A lot of people but, don't know that. You know, right. most of us ain't never seen no credit. I seen. I just started getting credit cards two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. But he had credit cards in high school. Right. So he definitely didn't know about the streets. Right. You know. Right. But he should have had enough sense to say, I studied this dude. I know this dude's background. Right. I know that this dude ain't going to extort me. Right. If this dude don't extort people. Right. He's not in the extorting. Right. He's in the making money. He's into making moves. Right. He's a thinker. Right. He's a shaker. He's a mover. Right. That's what he was supposed to see. No, I, and, I, I, and for him not seeing that, he right. slipped on the game. I, I agree. I, but I, could, I, could offer, I agree with you. Like, just one million percent, just so you know. I agree. I agree that everybody uh, <laughs> should pay homage to the people that come before him, especially if you, if you take any part of their life. If I take any, if, if I start naming myself uh, fucking Supreme, I should be calling you know, to 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 to, to ja Rule, what we call him the herb guy, that should be making sure that I know that I took that part of it like the first person they ever met a Supreme. You gotta do that. One million percent. But then certain people just don't know how to approach things like no, that. No, I agree. And and I I, cause I, I still sincerely believe that if you guys were to have a, a yeah, I, conversation, I, so too, I kid you not, because like like me, like yeah. he's a sensible guy. I'm just he's telling really you. Crazy. He's okay, really crazy. let's say this yeah. here. You said that. Yeah. Up. I ain't got no problem. I would love with to. I would love to try. I ain't got no problem with. I don't need his money no yeah, more. Though. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I got my own bread yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I would love to try. I'm, I'm cracking now. You know, you know I fixed the beef between Jay Z and Fat Joe. You know what I'm saying? Come on, let's make some money. Yeah, we need to have another one with both y'all on. I'm a good, I'm a good squ beef squash, bro. But with that, you know, but me, it ain't no beef, though. You know what I mean? Now, it ain't no it's, beef. It's a misunderstanding. It, it ain't even a misunderstanding. Right. I mean, it just ain't nothing. Right. You know, right. we don't I'm talk. Sure, I'm sure right. they can figure it out. My, yeah. Miami boys break bread. Just like, I'm just sure like, can break a little just bread like, my just like, just like, um, just yeah, like you got. No like, problem. I, I always imagine that when I heard Griselda yeah. um records, and they and they lit right now. They I don't lit. Know if they, they're fired. I've they, seen their videos. I've seen their lyrics. And they're good. My homeboy went to the store. I'm not gonna lie. I just started seeing it. I thought 
you was involved. I thought automatically. No, no, but what happens? Now what happens? What happens if that's what they think? You reach out to them and they say, "Well, we don't got no bread for you, but we got respect for you." Listen, man. Listen, I'm. I'm not gonna tell you I'm filthy, filthy rich and ass that, but I'm comfortable. You know, I work hard for my money. I'm gonna keep it real. Motherfucker went broke because the federal government took every motherfucking dollar I had. So now I'm rebuilding my shit. What we do. And what my generation, my generation is after his generation. We right. learn it from watching him. We learn it from watching right. him, but we're changing the game. Right. When you're dealing in a corporate status and you're here among, moving in a room full of vultures, but right. all these vultures have suits, you learn a lot. Right. And what you learn is to be a corporate mind. I'm right. not going to lean on them niggas. Why? You know right. I'm not going to lean on them? Because I can't. Why? Because he taught us not to go back to jail, right? You know right. what extortion is? What I used to run my record label like. Right. Yeah. So I ain't doing that again. Like my dog right. said, right. I'm legit forever. Right. So why would I even approach these gentlemen and talk to them the wrong way and but risk would you, anything? What, what happens if you was to reach out and you felt like it, it was like, like some type oh, of Oh, I'm going to be straight up with you. you quite you, blunt, you, I want some bread. Right. Straight up and you, down the block. You, uh, I'm would you try to would you try to like sue or something like no, that? No, not at, I, if I would. I mean, I can't. There's no grounds for it. So I've already well, asked that, that question. That's, that, that's a real last name. That's a real name, right? Yeah. No, they have their LLC. They're completely legit. And kudos to them. Get your money. I have no hate for people well, that, getting that's money. That's true. You can have an LLC, but if yeah. that's your life, no, wow. I own the power of attorney for myself at okay. the Blanco last name. But before my mother passed away, I owned her life attorney. So what happens if you wanted to make something called Gazelda? You had the. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can't challenge my estates. It's right. on my face. Yeah, right? you can't right. challenge, right. challenge right. my estate. Right. You know, that's that's. Yo, real listen, talk man. Right I'm gonna be honest. Both of you brothers, thank y'all for show, showing up because you know yeah. what the crazy shit is. Now, what happens is, you know, someone could, someone could do the same thing to me. Someone could take Nori. But there's, a, there's a line of respect, like right now, you, you know, to, I, you, you, you know the, oh, the first time you ever heard Slime in, in the music business? That was me. Yeah, and now you I, hear that. I didn't copyright that shit. I ain't for no fucking re reason to copyright that shit. We was using it as a joke. My boy, my boy, he was saying, yo, um, he gonna go to uh, get a, a, a Pepperdine sandwich. Yeah. So I said, Pepperdine? I said, that sounds like pepperoni. I don't want that shit. Nigga came back, it was a turkey and cheese. I said, nigga, I eat turkey, I don't eat pork. I said, boom, let me get a piece. He said, nigga, you slime. That's it. <laughs> That's how the fucking slime language is. All this shit, these niggas, they, they, they equivalent to blood language, and they equivalent to this, this gang. Listen, that's bullshit. This shit was made up on the hood lad, 38th Street of Madison, over a Pepperdine turkey and cheese sandwich, <laughs> goddammit. You know what I mean? That's this real shit. Real shit. So I the victim, they took jump off from me, they took haterade from me. These are all words I've made up. <laughs> they didn't take my name, they didn't take my, but this is the same as action. So I feel you, brother. That's my brother. Yo, Rick Ross, man, we've been trying to get the, get you here forever, man. You're a real legend. Yeah, we've been you, trying to hit each other. Yes, 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 man. And, 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 and you know what? You know, that, that's how that's how the Lord works. On your birthday, you got a chance to sit down with us and salute and have a couple. Salute. Man, yo, let me just tell you something, man. Brother, my brother made in Miami right yeah. here. No, we salute our legends over here, man, and you are a pure certified legend. I love your story. I love the fact that so many people, let me just tell you about you. So many people would have folded and said, you know what, I'm going home, I'm going under under the cracks and not have told your story. So many people were scared to speak about the CIA. So many people were scared to speak about the Contras and all that. The fact that you're front line and just letting people know, look, this is my life, this is real, this ain't no, this ain't no motherfucking made up fucking story, this is real life. Real and it's, it's, that's, that's real shit, I salute you, I commend you, and I wanna say that, you know, everyone should salute you and commend yeah, you, man, because you've been through it, man. You've been through it. The young homie RX that he introduced us years ago. RX brought me by your warehouse. Yeah, you know RX? Yeah, yeah. He, he's the one that brought me by your warehouse. Yeah, that's my little guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't remember tennis balls from 1989. Trust me. <laughs> he, remembers, he remembers everything. And you, you know, your mother's a legend. Um, you're a soon to be legend. I love what you're doing on the Appreciate show. I'm watching these two or three episodes. Congrats I see your wife there. Switch back. back. Well, huh? Huh? Tomorrow, Monday at night. Look that, at white people. Oh, boy, this right there. Yo, give a piece of that company, too. Give a piece of that company. <laughs> <laughs> Give a piece of the company, man. So listen, man. Thank both of you brothers for coming through, man. Get a couple of drops. Drink chest. Motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah.